and now when it's on, it's supposed to be red, but now it's red and the caps lock is off. And if I hit it again, now it's green and it's on. Ooh, I think we're recording. So yeah. now everyone Fine. knows my, my serious problems. I'm having. Oh, are we? Yeah. I, I definitely just, timed it that way. Things are zooming. We now know that he has more money than sense. That's yeah, accurate. Well, and I don't have a lot of money, that's for sure. <laughs> well, well. Yeah, let me get the Twitch mirroring up. Okay, hang on. So this is like the first part of the session. Mm -hmm. Important news. Follow Captain Reboot. Uh, we have been guaranteed a musical number. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Appropriate number of Twitch or YouTube followers. I don't care what you follow, how you subscribe, whose machines you steal to do it. Get those subscriptions in. I want to see if we can get a duet out of this. <laughs> I don't know about a duet, but definitely one. Hey, there, are, <laughs> there are co-DMs. That means duet. Will it be... Uh... Oh, I know. That's right. Ted is dead. God damn it. I was going to say, are, are we going to get Ned and Ted doing like a whole new world? <laughs> we got Redo and Gara now. We, yeah, there you go. Maybe we shouldn't have killed him. Yes. Anyway, musical number will happen. I've actually been tossing around ideas of what it could be, and I've got some ideas, but either one, either the Twitch followers to 50 or YouTube subs to 100 will get us there. So... Um, <laughs> I, I think and after, on I think, that note, I think okay. after Curse of Strahd, I think I think Labyrinth is officially off the table. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: if both targets get hit, I will personally try do my best to make it into some sort of duet-like scenario. <laughs> but I can't <laughs> guarantee it if one gets hit. Yeah, yep. And on that note, we already got one one more follower on. On Twitch, so yay thanks Thank all right well thanks for hanging in there sorry about the late start you know windows updates are great thanks oh, yeah. windows brought to thanks. you by windows i wish okay so you guys left off doing some separate stuff uh mm -hmm. last episode you guys had a heck of an episode right before that exploring uh and you know fighting inanimate suits of armor and rugs and all sorts of fun stuff came back um, you know, sorted out some inventory with uh, Redu and cleaned up the town and then left with a, you know, shady family from that town on your heels or so you thought. Headed back to Baldur's Gate where you uh, spoke to Captain Surge, gave him the 411 on what was going on, um, what you found. And he strongly recommend you start uh, the conversations about the uh, solving the, officially solving the Iron Crisis. Um, before he does it for you. Um, and then you guys kind of went your separate ways to rest for the rest of the evening. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, Dwayle, you were shopping, hitting up uh, Sean Scrolls. Uh, Felon, you were triangulating. Mm -hmm. uh, Bryceus, you were hanging out with Coral. And... Mm -hmm. And uh, Rob, you were finding a nice tree or looking around for stories or what were you doing? Yeah, sorry, I, I had to. Yeah, it's all good. Bop out early last week. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd probably be. I mean, Briseis is clearly probably having a a, a a time trying to communicate with Coral. So, like, I'll probably just be yeah, just kind of hanging around, probably, but maybe somewhere near where she's at. But like, yeah. Maybe finding a spot to kind of tool around and people watch, see what's going on. Cool. So um, over the course of uh, our time in between, uh, some notes were sent out about what, you know, my best guess slash what you guys said you were going to be doing. And that was pretty similar to what I thought Cloud would be doing. People yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah. I saw your note. Cool. So um, you guys heard some things. Uh, so picking up with Dwayle, um, Sean definitely agrees to to your deal. He loves shiny things, and he knows that the the lady nearby he'll uh, sh sh she'll 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 buy some jewels if I can't sell these here. So uh, we'll go ahead and use those there. Yeah, that sounds great. Great deal. Good doing business with you. Absolutely. And then nice wipe off of all that dust that he brought up from the back, and <laughs> shake off those scrolls and. Good doing business with you. Of course, we'll be back uh, sooner than later. I would think. Keep an eye out. 
You got it, buddy. <clears throat> Always good for a customer. Don't forget about that book when he finishes. I get the first signed copy, right? You get uh, one of the first signed copies. I think it goes amongst the party first, but you will be shortly kept after. All right, number five. And, um, you know, he, he waves you goodbye as you drop off your, your jewels and 325 gold for your four new fancy scrolls. Uh, Felon, mm -hmm. you were going around and triangulating uh, magics that you found down in the tower, trying to kind of correlate those to stuff that you're reading around in Baldur's Gate. And um, what does that kind of look like as you're walking around? Are you just like holding a, like some kind of jewel or something in your hand looking around or you look uh, like you no. have a metal detector or something? Basically, I've got my quill that I use as my arcane focus or divine focus, not an arcane. And uh, I like hold it out and I sort of wave it around and I, like almost like it's a dowsing rod or something. And then I'm like, hmm, interesting. And then I like pull out a book and I frantically write in it. And then I move like, 100 yards or 200 yards down to a different area and then i do it again all around me and then i write it down frantically and i keep going around like that yeah so it, with your um with your 10 in arcana uh you you you're getting kind of readings all over the place but it is consistent with the readings that you got in the tower mm -hmm. but you can't you just can't figure out exactly where it's coming from it's almost as if something's maybe throwing it off or messing with your your okay. mojo there but it is it's the same magic for sure i just can't i can't get a lock on it they are the same kinds of magic yeah you're just not okay. feeling where it's coming from okay i find this troubling to be sure and i, I take note of that not nearly as troubling as the curious curiosity if dwale's buying you another hat yeah i don't like that but felon doesn't know about that right now so <laughs> All right. Nothing I can do about it. <laughs> um, and then uh, Bryce, as you and Coral uh, are kind of getting closer, you know, without Dwale there to, you know, kind of translate begrudgingly for you, you guys are just kind of making up your own your own language as you go along, and they're splashing, and you know, uh, which, and um, Coral was trying to sort of describe where she came from. Is there any? like an intelligence role or a history jack or something to see if she could pick up on maybe she had seen it or uh not so much like cause she she's figuring that she's not from this lane but like maybe where she came in from i don't know if there's a check for that <laughs> yeah i mean you can you can try and do an arcana check i mean um and and see what you know about like where water elementals in general could come from. See what you know. She doesn't have much of that, but might uh, consult Felon later. <laughs> Felon's doing about as good as you with his Arcana checks lately. <laughs> um, exactly as good. <laughs> it's like, he came from somewhere with water, but I think the only other real like thing would be like, what do you eat? Do you eat? Do we need to? Because they haven't really fed her. You know, she's just the water in a box right now. Yes. Yeah, so, so sure okay. <laughs> with that, um, with, with that ten, you're just you know enough to know that the wizard brought her from somewhere. But beyond that, no. Mm -hmm. um, as far as food, you you guys eventually you know figure out some kind of Morse code splashing for. Are you hungry? Because I just ate food. Do you want some of this? And you know. Uh, your your attempts to you know drop a little piece of bread or something in the water just leave her like watching the bouncing floating piece of bread go by and around her in the box and seems completely disinterested. She's just happy to sit there and and have somebody that she can communicate to. Um, but she seems it, it seems like uh, she she's very keen on developing this um, conversation with you. Uh, you're, you're guessing that, you know, her time alone for so long <laughs> has made her desperate for conversation and she enjoys your company. She so. knows the feeling. <laughs> Mutual. All right. So I imagine, uh, after everything wraps up, you guys are kind of all heading to, um, you know, to bed, uh, Cloud, as you were people watching and heading back towards um, towards Briseis and, and Coral, you kind of overhear two people gossiping uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of town about, uh, you're not quite sure, 
because it sounds like you stepped in the middle, but you right, heard something right. about the Merchant League and somebody there. Um, did, did, I, was was there any more after the part that you sent me, or did <clears throat> was it just kind of end there and they like went on to other topics? Yeah, it just kind of ended there. I imagine like if you were heading back towards the inn, or or they were just walking by you, you two were just kind of passing, and you right. heard this. Um, obviously, some gossips in town that you sure, just sure. kind of caught on. Were we all planning to, to reconvene back at the at the uh, the end, or were we? You tell me. I assume so, but well, yeah. I mean, I can't speak for everyone else. That's what I was saying. Well, uh, before we broke, uh, Captain Surge had suggested we meet with the Merchants League this evening, or at least make arrangements to meet with them, uh, right. as he would need to uh, reveal. The solution to the uh, iron crisis. Uh, so, uh, if we've been able to schedule a meeting with Brand Third at the Merchants League, or yes. uh, his father, who is ailing in health, uh, we can do that tomorrow if arrangements have been made. If not, then we need to stop there tonight, uh, lest our secrets be spoiled. All right, so you guys are trying to decide. Uh, you got the impression from Captain Surge that if you if you didn't go over there tonight, he was probably going to go over there with you. So unless you want him to steal your solving the trade curse problem thunder, um, he recommends that you go talk to. I mean, it was your choice. He recommended the Merchant League, but you're welcome to uh, give your information to the Iron Throne first if you'd prefer. Um, and then I'm sorry that I forgot to mention, uh, Felon, your... Mm -hmm. um, the, the the young man that ran up to you um and and is offering you a deal uh, uh yeah i saw that yeah yeah um mm -hmm. y you get the impression that he's a little nervous he's kind of sweaty um mm -hmm. doesn't smell so good um okay but he he's clearly uncomfortable about doing this and wants to leave one way or the other so it sounds like he doesn't you know really want to wait around for a while he's just like well if if you don't want it that's fine i i just have to go i have to go um tell him what you um no no it's fine i'm so sorry i threatened to kill you under the implication that you would turn out to be a very bad man is that good enough for him i'm i'm, I'm sure that that's what he said here you go and he he dumps them back in there and he kind of holds on to the last one for a second before dumping it in the pouch and then handing it over to you uh, uh, uh thank you sir I'll, I'll i'll let him know what you said okay thank you bye um can i as as he's doing this can i can i maybe why is he so nervous what's making him so uncomfortable you can roll an insight to see if you can figure out why hey, he's all hey, shaky. Hey, hey, Sin. Instead of rolling an insight, can I maybe do that? Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> <laughs> You've been waiting for so long I've been to do that. You've been for so, so good. long since I was level one <laughs> to do that. Oh, that son of a bitch! Oh my God. He's gone. He's really fast. <laughs> you piece of shit! Oh, oh I'm funny. So, uh, I'm so salty right now. All right, I'll take <laughs> If Dwayne were nearby, you you guess that he would want to hire him just for his speed alone. Um, Ooh, yeah. Uh -huh. How many diamonds did he give me? He gave you, you, you know, as you're counting it, it is exactly the amount that you were asking for from. Uh, you know, that lady that I can't remember her name of that said that stuff was only sold at the docks. Oh, yeah, 300, 300 golden diamonds. I was looking for one revivify's worth. Cool. Dang it. <laughs> I have to try it again. All right, so you guys are heading out. Are you meeting up at, back at the inn and then heading out? Yeah, I mean, it's your, 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 normally where we eat. Or yeah, meet. I was going to say, unless there was a, unless there were other plans, I would assume so. I mean, there's there's always that fancy bread cart by the docks, if you guys are hungry for that. 
And he's got great lemonade, from what I hear. Your best, best, best bread. bread. Best bread. See, you guys remember the best bread. I also remember the best bread is served in many locations, so I imagine that the Brass Flagon, being a reputable establishment, would also carry the best bread. No, you, you think you remember seeing a now serving the best bread sign coming soon. <laughs> now serving coming soon. They're, they're, they're iffy on, you know, whether or not it's available at any given time. But, um, yeah, you guys can head back to the, the brass flag and for some dinner. Uh, uh, as we eat dinner, Felon would, would relay uh, that it's for sure somewhere in the city, but it seems like he's being blocked or he can't figure out where it is but he's detecting the magic in the city for sure. So it's somewhere here. If you're sharing like all your detailed notes, um, mm -hmm. everybody else, you can try and roll Arcana to try and make sense of them. Not my wheelhouse. Yeah, Felon pulls out his notebook and sits on the table and starts leafing through it. It's got a bunch of charts and like references to a map he's, he's drawn of the city. He's not proficient, so really going to be that much help. Will sort of leans over as he's trying to work through his spell. Hmm. And then looks back. Keeps transcribing. Do you have any opinions, Dwayle? I couldn't... I'm not sure. I, there might be a pattern here, but I, if there is, I can't see it. So, uh, Dwayle, you know, here, let me take a look at that. And he, with a 19, he's able to, um, it, it really decipher your notes almost as if he was, you know, helping you write them. He, uh, mm -hmm. can tell that the strongest triangulation is indeed coming from the Merchant League. Mm. And he's pretty sure that you're the anomaly that's messing with your own <laughs> triangulation. <laughs> I'm the anomaly. I don't have anything that magical on me. Uh, Felon looks over himself to make sure that that's actually true. Yeah. I don't have anything that magical on me. A compass. Some. Felon. I get the candlestick, Felon. I guess, but that's not super Felon. magical. What? As you are detecting magic, uh -huh. what are you using? I'm using my quill because that's what I have to use to cast all of my spells. Okay. Hey, ah, yes. Your spells. You cast okay. a spell to detect oh. magic. Right. You haven't removed yourself from the equation. But you are actively casting a spell. Right. So you're saying I'm causing some sort of interference. Yes. <sighs> I suppose that might be right. I wonder if I can buy a lead suit. Where would you like to be led to? No, like lead is in made, it's lined with lead. Uh, so that any magic on my person will not interfere with anything else. Also, then people can't look through my clothes. Not that that's ever a real concern, but it's a possibility. In either case, it looks as though we're betting on the right horse. If the Merchants League has the most power in the area, then they are the ones we would wish to ally with. Or right, but we remember that the staff was like evil and stuff though, right? No. Uh, Like, people killed each other for it, and it was, like, it was quite powerful and, and described as doing awful things. We haven't, like, forgotten that that was what happened. Well, unless the staff is sentient, it itself cannot be evil. Right, but the things it does can be. Well, of course. Things, most things can do can be. Right, I'm just saying that... Oh, I understand. Maybe I have no interest in... Careful. The, the, ah, you know what? That brings up a good point. We should, if we think the staff or uh, object is in the area, bring up to Surge that any recently dead may be rising. That could be problematic. Hmm. That's a word for it, yeah. Though, yeah. it would free up a lot of land. <clears throat> you want to intentionally cause the dead to rise so you can buy up all the land once it's worth less. 
do, do I wish to cause it? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. But would I take advantage of it? Mm. Right. Sure. Yeah, I wouldn't just pretend that that never had. You never said that. Yeah, per se, it's just bristles hard at that. Ah, uh, you two are too easy. Some people see that as a positive attribute. Yes, well. Uh, if we have another hour or so, I think I should be able to get this tongues spell out for your elemental friend. Uh, or do we wish to leave before the light gets out of here? I don't think the Merchant's League will mind if we show up after dark. As you guys are talking about, you know, heading out to the Merchant's League, one of the waitresses nearby dropping off. An extra round of drink is just like, oh, they're they're up all hours over there. Mm -hmm. See, waitress lady knows. I'm sorry, okay. I shouldn't call you waitress lady. What's your name? Roselle. Roselle. Roselle knows. Thanks for the tip, Roselle. Yeah, thanks for the not tip, Felon, as she walks away. Felon always tips. Don't be don't make making assumptions. He has he has no real need for gold. <laughs> it just shows up in his pocket, so he gives it to people. He doesn't want it. I distinctly remember Felon having a problem knowing about that whole tipping thing. Yes. <laughs> no, he has no kind of money. Thing. He doesn't understand people want it either. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Though, though uh, Felon. Uh, yes. More yes. gold Twitter. didn't appear in your pockets, did it? Uh, Felon checks his pockets. <laughs> there is no new gold in your yeah. pockets. No new gold. I did get diamonds, though, and he puts them on the table. Yep. So are you emptying all the, the garbly gook out of your pockets? Yeah, I mean, I, I pull all the stuff out of my pockets, like a, like a kid frantically searching for the quarter that he needs, but, yeah. uh, and just sort of sets it on the table. Yeah, yeah. you've got a, a piece of crusty bread, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pouch that now has some breadcrumbs attached to the velvetness of mm -hmm. its outside, and those n nasty, dirty rocks. Oh, yeah, I meant to lick these rocks, and I forgot about it. What are these rocks? I like. I was like, They're I need to figure out what them these is are. the best way to find out. <laughs> All right, I'll lick them. I mean, I never found out what don't, flavor these rocks were. Don't threaten me with a good time, sin. Come on. Yeah. So you're licking one. Sure. Let's give it a little tasty. Uh, yeah. You you lick it and your um, copious amounts of saliva clean it off enough for you mm. to see it sparkle a little bit. It looks like a gem, maybe, but it's kind of not oh. as nice as your diamonds. Still, though, I'll take it. Uh, I'm going to call for, like, a big tankard of something slightly acidic, like a juice or something. Twill just stops reading for a second and looks at Phelan and looks at the diamonds and looks at the gems that are being produced and looks back at Phelan. How? Well, okay. We've had the rocks from the beginning. They were in the chest of holding. Um, I just took them because I think rocks are cool. Um, second, I got the diamonds because Tagar wanted me to apologize for threatening to kill him. Although, come to think of it, I didn't apologize to him. There was like a weird servant person who seemed really uncomfortable. Uh, I wasn't able to get a good read on him before he ran off, though. Uh, but he gave me diamonds, so that was cool. I did mean to check if they're magical, though. Thanks for reminding me. Just in case he, like, cursed them or something. But yeah, that's how that's how I got it. Is this influx of riches common amongst your clergy? Not generally. No, at least not that I'm aware of. I never found any diamonds working in Candlekeep. Mostly books and moths. Book moths. And, and Dwayle's interest in converting evaporates. <laughs> <laughs> so are you licking the diamonds to check out them too, or are you detecting I'm magic? Not, I'm not <laughs> licking them, I'm detecting magic, and then I'm asking for like for something slightly acidic to clean off the gems better, because I don't want to lick them clean. That's kind of gross. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Roselle brings you over a, a big uh, tankard of what looks to be like apple juice or something like that. Perfect. And, uh, you know, she sets it down and just kind of waits for a second and then sighs and then walks away. And as you're casting Detect Magic, um, you... The, the diamonds seem totally normal. Uh, no, nothing ordinarily special besides, you know, they're a bunch of 
you know, pretty Sparkly pricey diamonds. Mm -hmm. But just out of the corner of your eye slash, you know, off to the side, you're just getting a weird, like, necromatic energy. Mm, that's troubling. That's a troubling type of energy to be receiving. Uh, I, I, I sort of, like, as I'm, like, waving my, my, my quill over it, and I, like, pause, and then I, like, turn towards it. The energy and try to examine it closer you're not getting a solid read on anything it seems to be just like something you're noticing on the peripheral i'm getting a i've got a bad magical feeling about this what's wrong i don't know there's just like a like a like necromancy it's just kind of like on the on the corners it's like you know when you've been up for a while and you're some in some place kind of scary and you just see like Shadows move out of the corner of your eyes. It's like that, but if the shadows were necromancy. So you're saying you need to sleep? No, I mean I don't sleep. But you, the point I'm, I'm saying is that it's like it's like right on the edge, and if I try to look at it, it's gone. So you're saying you need to sleep? I don't sleep, Cloud. Maybe that's the problem. No, no elves sleep. Well, didn't you sleep just you know a day or yeah. two ago? Right, just, but that was that was I was more like unconscious. I wasn't really like asleep. Was but you like, said you had a dream. I did, but I mean it was more like a vision than a dream. It wasn't like a real like dream like you guys dream. So more like a prophecy. Prophecy is a really strong word. I don't like that word. It was just vision of some kind. I'm just saying, sleep is something you should try. It's, it sounds it I sounds like you're high I you're highly can't. underrating it. I can't sleep, Cloud. Unless I get stabbed by something that makes me. Maybe but you're just way, not using the right kind of pillow? The pillow's not the problem. I yeah. just, okay, the point I'm making Cloud, is that there's necromancy, back to his dinner. there's necromancy around, and we should just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Is it everywhere, or like all, all around? It's just kind of like, uh, just faint little traces of it here and there. It pops up and then it's gone, and then it pops up and then it's gone. But whenever you're like, you know, you're, when you're having this conversation with everybody, you're you're not getting that that sense. Like when you're mm -hmm. facing your friends at the table, you're not mm -hmm. really getting that sense. Okay. All right. Felon Ever the Scientist is now going to slowly start like turning away and then like seeing when it shows up. So, so you're you as you turn around in your seat, um, yeah. tr trying to kind of detect where you're seeing it. Um, it's it's coming towards the edge of your table. You you, you, see, you see a flash of it as you turn. I'm guessing you're going from sitting at the picnic bench facing uh -huh. the table to the other way, and when yeah. you you know swing your legs over, that's when you kind of get a little flash of it. Okay, but then I turn back there and it's gone. It is gone. Yep. Hmm. Meanwhile, meanwhile like, we're just watching her. Felon. Yeah, we're watching him like, like stop talking to us and like slowly turning his head and then huh. he's like, I think, uh, he's, trying to, he's gonna, trying to gotcha um, nothing. Yeah. Sheath their sword a little bit just to see if it's glowing. Oh, like that scene in Lord of the Rings when they're in they're I'm in gonna, Moria. It, I, you said you're looking at the sword. Just, uh, just uh, not pulling out out all the way. Just kind of like unsheathing a little to see if the blade is glowing. Nope, nothing, nothing's glowing. Okay. Felon's, Felon's gonna get up, like stand fully up, and using, waving his, using his quill, like as, as a dowsing rod, he's going to start wandering around, sort of like over here, and trying to get it again, and then declaring he's going to go outside if, it, if that yields nothing to him. Unless maybe it's on the maybe it's maybe it's on the on the wall maybe it's like on the other side. In here. Cloud like leans across the table towards Briseis. Like, I'm starting to get seriously worried about him. He hasn't been right since the hit on the head, or the the poison rather, not the hit on the head. No, it's around here, Cloud. I can sense it. I... Briseis just kind of looks at Cloud and then looks at Felon. He's like, when it comes to stuff like this, I'd rather be safe than sorry. 
So, so as Felling gets up and starts, um, you know, circulating around the, uh, you know, general area by your table in the inn, you start to draw the attention of some of the people eating dinner. Um, and they're just kind of looking under their tables and, or, or, you know, around their shoulders. Um, but you, you uh, as you're spinning around and around, you are only getting this brief flash mm -hmm. when you're back towards the table now. Um, specifically mm -hmm. where you were just sitting. So if I'm sitting here and I look this direction, I get a brief flash of it. But when, yes. I, but when I stand up and go over here and look around, I don't see it at all. Yes, that's correct. Interesting. You, you're guessing it has something to do with something on the table. Okay. All right. Everything, everything on the table. Everyone... Pay to maybe the rocks. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start examining each and every item on the table. Like including plates, mugs, silverware, glasses, everything. Everything on the table. But I'm gonna start with the rocks that I pulled out because they're suspicious. To me. Yeah. So as you're you're slowly picking up each and every like glass and piece mm -hmm. of silverware and plate and napkin, you you start to get looks from Roselle, and and she just kind of shakes her head and uh, you uh, start to get the energy from the tankard that you have next to the rocks, mm -hmm. and then uh, it kind of hones in and one of the three rocks. Uh, starts kind of glowing a little bit with the necromancer. Sin? Yes, sir. I have a very, very, very important question to ask you. <laughs> okay. Is that the rock that I lick? <laughs> no, it is not. <sighs> Whew! Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, grab, I grab the offending rock and I hold it up and I'm like, it's this one. And it's, it's able to come off because it's in the mug don't drink that, by the way. And I sort of move it closer to myself. It's in the mug, too. But there's something you're, about this rock. You're still not seeing it consistently, but you, you've, like, whipped your head around so many times now mm -hmm. that it's all blurred together to focus on that one. Okay. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to clean off this rock fully. By licking it? or No, otherwise? not by licking it. By cleaning it. And I'm going to wear gloves now. Oh, where am I going to get gloves? I don't have gloves. Does anyone have any waterproof gloves? Or necromancy-proof gloves? That would be even better. I don't know if we have those, though. Ah, oh, whatever. Felon's not, not going to want some necromancy clerics. stuff. Is there a spot I can cast? Not that I have prepared. Yeah, no. Okay, so you're just cleaning it off and kind of looking at it closer? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you roll an investigation? I would love... I'm actually not that great. Uh, seven. It's a little less dirty, but it... I mean, aside from that little vibe of energy and magic you were mm -hmm. getting off of it, it doesn't look any different than the others. Okay, but it's clean now. It or is definitely much cleaner. Okay, all right. It's... Will sort of looks back up from his book. Felon, I appreciate your uh, dedication to the scientific process, but perhaps you could skip ahead a few steps and use the identify spell. And then he goes back oh, down. That's not where I was. I thought you were going with that. I was planning on skipping ahead a few steps, but I think you would have liked it less. All right, I guess I'll cast Identify. Oh. Fine, we'll be boring. As a ritual, I'll cast Identify on this stone. You so were going it's to like, it again, weren't you? Just the conversation. No. I was about going to drink like, the, the water. It being necromancy and a stone, she's kind of getting... She's visibly nervous. But she's trying not to jump to conclusions. All right, so you're casting Identify on it. Yeah, Bryceus, you're getting, um, you know, more visibly upset and fell in. Uh, are you registering her being upset? Is that affecting your <laughs> eagerness yeah. to decipher what this is at all? Felon, when Felon's on the prowl, 
for science. He kind of doesn't pay attention to other people a lot. It's not it's not one of his best qualities. So he probably would not notice. Unfortunately. Until someone better at people pointed it out. That's why he can read minds, so he doesn't have to do <laughs> figure it out. Hands own. over to Cloud. All right. So uh, cleaning it off, it, it uh, and casting identify, it it starts to, you know, glow slightly. And Bryce A.S., you are getting the vibes that you had before. You definitely feel like this is very similar to what you dealt with when you were younger um, and what you had to, you were asked to deliver. Um, not Maybe not exactly the same kind of thing, um, but very similar vibes. Uh, Bryce A.S., can you give me a wisdom save? And Felon, can you give me a con save, please? Hmm. Excellent. Oh no. Ooh, good oh, oh no. Okay. That's better. That's better. All right. So Felon, you um yeah, <clears throat> you were kind of surprised, but you were so eager to find out and, and so resolved to just knowing the truth, whatever it is, that mm -hmm. it you know, you felt its energy kind of hit you, but y you recovered pretty well. Briseis, you are in shock. You're just completely thrown off. Everything just seemed to happen so fast. He thought it was necromantic energy, and then it was, and then suddenly you're getting flashbacks from you know, your past, so you're just kind of really caught off guard there. Yeah, she, she'll probably just try to stand up and kind of, like, fall backwards over the, the thing. Just, 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 no, 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 get rid of Perseus. that. Perseus you need to destroy bench. that. You need to destroy that. Perseus' bench tip oh, up! <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I would say, like, she fell off, like, she stood up and just kind of, like, tumbled. Yeah, you're you're definitely feeling kind of dizzy, disoriented and and unable to really formulate the full sentence that you're probably thinking out loud. Okay. Now, I have a question. It, is Felon able to get some clue as to what it is before Briseis is starts yelling or not? Cuz that will affect how he responds to this scenario. Uh, as aside from, <clears throat> like, as Briseis is kind of reacting to this and you uh, are coming back from your your uh, little brief energy flux, you really are just, have no more information besides it's a rock and it contains necromatic man magic, powerful, more powerful than uh, you were reading before in your flashes. Okay. All right. Felon's going to drop it. Um, and uh, he's going to say... Um, I, I, I don't know that I can destroy it, but I agree it's dangerous and we shouldn't touch it anymore. But I, I can't, I can't hear. Uh, and he's going to take it and uh, he's going to, is that something Felon knows or is that just for me? That That is something Felon knows, whether or not you uh, share it. Okay, that's troubling. Okay. Uh, and Felon is going to sweep it into the chest of holding and lock it. Or close it. Lock it. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? She, what? She oh, no, that's got, that contains our friend. Never mind. I forgot <laughs> about that. I'll put it, I put it back in my bag. And I wrap it like Gandalf wrapping up the, the orb. I wrap it in, like, my body smock and then stuff it in my bag. Yeah, Briseis is having, like, really close, if not an actual panic attack over this thing. And Felon's gonna like drop his bag and go over and say, "It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's gone. It's not gonna hurt anyone. It's it's safe now. Now that we know, can't hurt anyone. We have to find a way to destroy it." Okay, I, I don't know that I know how to do that, but we can try to find one. We can try yeah, to find one. Coral's randomly like you know spurting out a little bit of water towards <laughs> Briseis to try and cool her off, calm her down. It's appreciated. <laughs> but yeah, not handling this well <laughs> at all. Um, 
am I just not remembering, or has she not at any point? I mean, we we know she has issues with the undead, but she hasn't told us anything about anything, has she? Nope. I didn't think I so. No. Uh, Felon is going to grab two mugs off the table and then sit down next to Briseis on the floor and hand her one. She'll take it. That thing could raise a lot of undead all at once. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, maybe. So whatever it does is not good. And whoever made it uh, tried to hide its true nature, which is troubling. Because that means that they're really good at it. And generally, you don't hide the nature of benign things, you know? So, I don't know. Also, it maybe uh, tried to attack me when I was looking at it. I saw something like that. I knew something like that when I was little. Like... My dad, my father had one. What, what happened? She kind of looks down to her missing arm and then looks back up at him. Nothing good. Right. right. Got it. Okay. But there is a bright side here. If we hadn't found out about it, then we would have had no idea. But now we know. We can be a bit more prepared. Um, seeing you guys taking to the floor with your drinks, R Roselle comes by and she kind of leans over the table towards you guys uh, and over Dwayle. Uh, will you be needing any other drinks tonight or anything? Mm. No, I think we'll be heading out soon. They're just, I don't know, emotions. <laughs> or, there's a moment going on, Dwayle! <laughs> Is there? No, oh, well, here. I think this should do for Coral, and he reaches out and he taps Coral, and if successful, Coral can now speak and listen. There, now you can all have a moment. Yay! Fancy. Yeah. Small clay model of a ziggurat? Well, okay. it's more of a pyramid, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Coral's just kind of turning back and forth now that it's been turned on to listen to what's going on and just hears uh, Bryce is saying, it's bad, it's bad, it's not good. <laughs> Get rid of it. And is is just very concerned now more so than before. Just keeps looking between her and, and Felon. Um, and and says something to the to the equivalent of of you know right. safe you in danger I help you still getting the the hang of this language thing and having someone to talk to as well. Per se, so reach over and kind of pull the the um, the the chest closer and put her fingers in the water to just um, it'll. It'll be okay. On the upside, where we acquired Coral is a fairly defensible repository for magic's energies. So, if we should take it upon ourselves to guard these things rather than use them, we have somewhere reasonably secure to start with. Everybody loves a good underwater level, no? <laughs> but if you have nothing else to say amongst yourselves, uh, we can go see whether the Merchants League has more of these or something a little different. <clears throat> yeah, uh, but Dwayle, 
Hmm. And Felon stands up and gives him the most serious look that Felon is capable of giving. If they're using that staff, then we're not going to be making any deals with them, yes? Well, if they're using that staff and are willing to make a deal to stop, then that would make sense. People who break into magical towers to steal uber powerful staves generally don't stop using them, despite deals that may or may not have been made. You know, we went into that same place. Right, but like, once we found out it was evil, we weren't going to take it out and use it all over the place. <clears throat> Were we, Dwell? I suppose we weren't. Right. I'm just saying, the fact that they, they might have the staff means that they might be using the staff. And if they're using the staff, then we can't work with them. Right? If they're unwilling to surrender the power, magic must be used responsibly, yes. I suppose. I guess that's as close as I'm going to get. <clears throat> All right. So you guys are heading out to the Merchant League, but, you know, going to give them a stern talking to? We're going to go and assess how evil staff user he, he looks. Or is the Iron Throne suddenly looking like the better ally now? I don't know do, he's counting it, but... do we happen to know if the staff had any sort of... I hesitate to say corrupting influence or perhaps harmful to the wielder? We Yes. It would it would damage the wielder similarly to how it affected others, if I remember correctly, right? When we <clears> interrogated <throat> the skeleton, mm -hmm. he he said something along the lines of that it would it would do unto others it would do unto yourself as you did unto others, basically, mm. more or less. I don't remember the exact words he used, but that was kind of the gist. It was along those lines, and if the power of the staff is raising undead, uh, likely that is to be a literal warning, then the wielder would eventually become of the undead. Well, it's it's funny you mention that because, and then Cloud would relate the anecdote of the, the snippet of stuff he overheard um, about people saying that they'd heard, you know, somebody was getting worse and that nobody in the Merchants League had seen him for for like a week and, you know, struck down his prime, so handsome, blah, blah, blah. And that was all I heard. I don't know who they were referring to. The conversation moved on and they were heading elsewhere. But at the time, I didn't pay it much mind. Yeah, but now? Uh, now that seems troubling. A but bit, a bit. You will yeah. recall we did intend to take over the management of the Merchants League if they have fallen into bad habits. Right. No yeah. reason for us to do so. Well... Sure. Just thought that would be worth bringing up. Yeah, maybe we should. I'm going to do this before we leave. Uh, I'm going to cast aid on everyone but Dwell. No, that's Dwell. But you hide in the back. Everyone gets five temporary hit points. Uh, they, speaking they of which, it's like real hit points. Did the ones from before? Oh, those weren't temporary. That was the maximum it increased, right? Sin. I'm sorry. What was that? Like the thing that had increased my maximum. That, was that still in effect, or...? Yes, it's still in effect right now. Okay. It was by 10 points, wasn't it? Yep. Okay, so, yeah, so 37 would be my normal max, okay. But then 5 temporary, noted. And the way I will do his evening recast of Mage Armor. <sighs> yeah, you never know how many things there will be to hide behind in the Merchant's League. Well, I can't bring my horse now, can I? 
Actually, while all of this has been going on too, during dinner and downtime, which I would assume probably would count as a short rest at least. I'm gonna yep. burn a hit die. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what I needed. Hmm. Yes, I get back my uses of channel entity. <laughs> oh, uh, Roselle. Hmm. Okay, bye. Bye. As you guys are all all leaving, Roselle like you know scuttles over to the table and starts wiping it down and picking up some cups and plates and just sighs as she cleans up the cups on the floor. Felon, you did mm -hmm. pour out that drink and leave a tip this time, correct? Oh no, that's a really good idea. Felon runs back and like grabs that cup out of her hand. <laughs> you know what? We shouldn't. This is bad. And then uh, I'll be right back. And then he runs back outside and like dumps it in the gutter and then runs back inside, gives it back to her, and then hands her a gold. She looks very confused, but is thankful for the gold and just nods at you and watches you walk away. Okay, bye now. Uh, thank you. Bye. And she's <clears throat> sniffing the cup as you walk out. Yeah, don't really clean that one good, by the way. And as, as everybody's uh, leaving, I wait until they're all mostly out the door, and then I kind of lean in and I say, apparently he doesn't get much sleep. Please ignore his eccentricities. <laughs> <laughs> she, she raises her eyebrows like, yeah, buddy. Changing the maps. And then on to a league. Of merchants. Maybe they're just really humble before you. <laughs> all right, so you guys are all walking up. Um, you know, you see through the windows, you, you'll see uh, lights on and, and there's two guards posted out front. But overall, it looks like pretty friendly, well-kept place. Looks pretty big. And you hear lots of uh, voices inside. As you get closer, the the two guards kind of step towards the, the doors that open in the middle and state your business. Uh, I elbow dwell. Ah, we've come to see the leadership of the League of Merchants. I uh, understand that's Branford or possibly his father. I am Lord Dwell of House Wands, here on business from Surge. Ah, uh, you're with Captain Surge? Uh, yeah, come on in. Uh, and they, they both kind of open a door and uh, usher you in. And um, as you all make your way in, you see uh, a, a great hall in the, in the beginning. Um, you see a barrel, what looks to be a few uh, empty seats, and a meeting room table thing off to your left. Uh, you see another guard posted towards the fireplace uh, at the opposite side of the room. Um, and you hear conversations taking place uh, in the room to your left. Upon coming in, you uh, are greeted by uh, who you remember to be Branford from the fight where you saved him at the Brass Flagon. Oh. He, he walks up to you. Uh, looks a bit different than he did then. Much uh, much more clothed, kind of like Doyle. Uh, fancier clothes. Um, he, he's adorned with a bit of jewelry, uh, and he has glasses on that you don't remember him wearing uh, when he was in the Brass Flagon. Well, he probably had contacts when they were in armor, obviously. <laughs> Absolutely. Clearly. Um, uh, hello, friends. Oh, hi, it's you. And it is you. What brings you by? Business, actually. We have, uh, in our travels, uh, discovered a solution to the 
iron crisis that has befallen the area. And as uh, your association is the one that did not attempt to assassinate us, we felt it best to give you the benefit of the doubt and the first opportunity to take advantage. Well, this is the first that I'm hearing of this, but we're, we're more than happy to uh, entertain the idea of, of, you know, mutually beneficial business transactions. Um, and he's, as he's saying this, he's kind of looking around behind him um, and he ushers the, the guard that's standing by the fireplace to, to come over and he whispers something in his ear and the guard takes off down the hallway behind him. He says, come sit down, sit down, uh, you know, join me for a drink. Uh, you know, I, I, I never got a chance to thank you for um, saving me at, at, the, at the Brass Flagon that day. Uh, it, it, was, it was in a, such a whirlwind to, to get to the Flaming Fist and sort things out. I, I always meant to circle back and thank you, but um, I don't know what would have happened had you not been there. The, the Iron Throne has uh, been harassing both myself and, and multiple of our, our, our staff and our uh, clients, and he gestures towards the other room where conversations are taking place. And, uh, you know, w w whatever this business dealing is that you have, I, I am thankful that you have brought it to our, our attention before theirs. Uh, I, I think you've made a, a smart decision. Uh, and as you guys are, are kind of <clears throat> drinking um, and just listening to him, thank you profusely. Um, you guys are kind of looking around the room and you see... Uh, there's not much on the walls in this area, but there is a g one giant painting mm -hmm. above the fireplace. Um, and it's a painting of a older man and two young kids. Uh, one, one little boy and one little girl. Uh, you're guessing around seven, nine years old. Um, can you... Can you guys all give me a either a... History or a perception check? Or. Booyah. All right. So, geez. Uh, Felon and, and Cloud, you both uh, give each other, you, you both exchange a look and then back towards the painting and then back towards each other again. The the gentleman is standing in the center with the two kids on either side of him. Mm -hmm. uh, and underneath one of his hands, uh, his hands are behind the children. On the end of one of his hands near the young boy is a staff. And it looks awfully familiar to you. Doesn't it? Like, <clears throat> doesn't it? I bet it does. Br Branford catches you guys kind of looking at the painting. Oh, yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I f I've forgotten my manners. Would you like a tour of, of our facility? I, 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 I know you're here to deal with business, but unfortunately, I don't make those decisions here. But I am more than happy to, uh, you know, play gracious host and, and show you around. Th I this would painting. love that. Yes. Well, That's great. Right. And, and would you happen to know the particular origins of this, this painting? I'm sure there's quite a story behind it. Yes, uh, well, actually, come on over. And he, he walks towards the, the fireplace, and there's two little s stools nearby, as if this happens a lot. Um, and right underneath the painting, there's a, a gold plaque, and it says, Proudly serving the city of Baldur's Gate for over 20 years. We help you get where you need to go. This, is, uh, this was commissioned back, gosh, over 20 years ago. Uh, Mr. Heskin, uh, he, he um, sorry, Mr. Chaucer, I, I shouldn't call him by his first name. Uh, Mr. Chaucer commissioned this uh, back when his children were young, and, and he wanted to immortalize the beginning of everything that you see around you. Uh, the, the Merchant League was, was just uh, coming into prosperity around that time, and, and uh, mm -hmm. he wanted to remember this moment, and, and I think it was done very well. Interesting. And the uh, the children are those are those his? Yes, yes. Those are those are his children. Uh, that is uh, little Dario and Beatrix. 
Hmm. And as he says Beatrix, he kind of puffs up his chest a little bit and straightens out. I see Beatrix. <laughs> Do you say that out loud? <laughs> no, I don't. I am curious as to why he seemed proud of Beatrix or whatever. Felon, I, I would I would think courting, perhaps, or a wife. Oh, are you, are you married to Beatrix? Well, now that you ask, um, <laughs> well, soon, soon, to, soon to be. We are uh, betrothed. Oh, congratulations, Branford. Well, thank you very much. She, uh, I consider myself quite lucky. She's quite the woman. And uh, Mr. I, I forgot his last name out of character already. <laughs> Common, the, the, this guy we're talking to? Yeah. The no, no, the, uh, no, no, the, the, guy, the guy in the painting. Oh, uh, M Mr. Chaucer, Mr. Chaucer. I apologize. I shouldn't have referred to him by his first name, Heskin. That, that was my, that was my mistake. No, that's that's fine. Uh, so, Mr. Chaucer is uh, he's still in charge of the Merchants League, or or have things passed down to his children? I don't. Um, I, I'm not from the area. I'm not exactly familiar with. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, uh, he seems to stumble across, yes, he, he's, um, absolutely, he's, he's been at the helm of this for over 20 years, and he is involved in most of the day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, goings-on. Can you roll an insight check? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I most definitely, I most definitely can. For a second, whoop. Oh, excellent. Good job. <laughs> yeah, he's, you see the sweat beads uh, uh -huh. forming on his brow. And <laughs> there's, there's, that, there's that tight close up of the sweat drops forming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he takes his glasses off and starts, you know, cleaning them unnecessarily for a second. Mm, I see. Are, are his children due to inherit the, the, the league's operations and, and positions in, in the future? This is part of his legacy, yes. Well, in, in, indeed, this is uh, th this was always the plan, and he gestures you back towards the big barrel and the ale as if this is a conversation that requires such things. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Bramford, before we go, yes, um, I just uh, as a as a purveyor of magical goods myself, um, this staff is very interesting. Do you do you know where it came from? Looks maybe elven or perhaps. Ooh, there's uh, a bit of dwarven influence there, and Felon's like getting really close to the painting. Oh, the lack of subtlety. He, he's getting close with you, and he's like, <laughs> oh, the staff, I've never... And he, he takes his glasses up and kind of squints at it. The staff, no one's ever asked about... Uh, you know, I don't know. Gosh, I should know that. I, I, I mean, you might know more than I would. I, I, I'm not quite sure where the origins of that. No one's ever asked about the staff before. All right, Branford. Is Branford <laughs> lying to me? <laughs> I don't know that I believe. Yeah. Right I now. mean, you can you you can roll an insight check as well if you'd like. Oh, eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think he's genuinely like also just noticing the staff? Huh. So it's not like it look, a, a man who paints himself with his staff is clearly quite proud of it. He doesn't brandish it about as like a symbol of his office or anything. It's quite a nice piece. I can imagine why he might want to lock it up though. Lock it up? No, this is, uh, he, he, well, he is getting on in age, and, and mm. so it is more mm. of a, uh, instead of this, this piece, whatever he used it for then, he unfortunately now is, is reduced to using it as an assistance to walk. I, I know that mm. much. I, I don't think he locks it up. Would, and he kind of have... looks quizzical at you at the locking it up part. Locking it up as in, like, keeping it in a display case. Um... But uh, are we going to perhaps get a chance to meet Mr. Chaucer? I mean, the man who formed all of this it must be quite the man. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, uh, he is a very busy man, and he kind of looks back towards the direction that he sent the soldier off on. Uh -huh. um, he, he's a very busy man, but I, I am hoping that he will indeed make a uh, appearance on, on our on our tour. And I and would what, what about that. your what about your lovely uh, bride to be and and your brother in law? Will we be meeting them as well? Well, that's, um, I, 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 Trix is very, is, is also very busy, but she mm -hmm. will no doubt be happy to meet the people. I've been talking tales of you and, and your bravery. She would love to meet you. I know she would. Um, Dario, though, and he kind of starts to lower his voice. Um, oh. so. Oh my, please don't tell me he's fallen ill. 
Well, I, I mean, he's here, and he, he gestures back towards the drinks. He's like, well, it's it's a bit of a sore subject around here. He's not, he's not fallen ill, er, um, but ever ever since I I was welcomed into this family, um, he has been bedridden uh, oh, no. for as long as I've known this family. That's well, highly unfortunate. You, you know, Bryce and myself are quite accomplished clerics and healers. We might be able to lend a bit of assistance. What do I mean? Obviously, it goes no further than simply those of us here in the room. What what sort of ailment has befallen him? The, and 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 he at your offer, and then kind of trying to field all the questions at once. He's he's uh, well, thank you very much. That is very kind of you. you. Such noble people you are to offer your assistance. We have had clerics from up and down the Sword Coast come and attempt to heal Dario. Uh, Mr. Chaucer, of course, spared no expense trying to heal his son. I'm certainly uh, he did ailment. And uh, he he, uh, he unfortunately was was uh, unable to. He he hasn't gotten any worse, but something befell him when he was a young boy, and ever since he's been crippled and bedridden. But I'm uh, sure you've never had a one-armed tiefling and a candle keep scholar here to look at him. So I think maybe this might be the day. That record. is they're, very they're, true. They're quite a potent pair. Exactly. I have no doubt. I have seen a small portion of what you're capable of, I am sure. And and once Mr. Chaucer uh, or, or Trix comes out, I am sure they would be happy to lead you towards uh, Dario's room in, in attempts to uh, nobly revive him and, and help cure him of his disease. As uh, as as he's trying to kind of field all the answers for Felon and for uh, Cloud asking about, you know, the origins of things and what kind of healing has been done and, and things like that, uh, up behind him, you hear a slow, like, drag, thump, drag, thump, as uh, you see a older man with longer hair uh, kind of bent over a walking stick. Uh, slowly making his way down the hallway towards you. Hmm. What do you want? <clears throat> I mean, welcome to the Merchant League. What do you want? Uh, you must be Mr. Chaucer? That's what they call me. And he kind of pushes on the staff and kind of straightens himself out a little bit and tries to roll back his shoulders, but eventually just kind of slowly curls back into the haunched position. I, I elbow Dwale. Mm. <laughs> oh, are you done with the small talk? Mr. I hear you got some kind of business deal? Yes. Uh, I understand that the Merchants League and the Iron Throne have both uh, run short of iron, and uh, lacking that iron are likely to fold in the near future. Uh, is that correct? I'd say that's a that's a brief assessment, but sounds correct so far. And he he kind of tries to push in between Cloud and Branford towards the chair area because he looks to be. Tired of standing already. He slowly clunks his way over there. Well, my associates and I have uh, discovered the source of the trouble with the iron and the solution to it. Our associates have a stockpile of iron that can be made available to you for sale. Uh, so the Merchants League would stand to profit considerably working with us. So you've got a good batch of iron to give me, to sell to me? I've heard that before. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. I have no particular interest in becoming a merchant myself, but controlling interest and influence over a merchant's league would be beneficial. 
at that mm-hmm. last comment, he kind of squints at you. Take a moment if you need to. Soak it in. I'm trying to decipher exactly what it is you're trying to sell me now. Oh, I'm not trying to sell you anything at the moment. He looks back towards Branford with his, uh, you know, cloudy, ghosty eye, and then looks back at you. And he gestures to you to go on and rest his chin on the, on his hands on the staff. If you are interested in seeing the Merchants League succeed, your children wealthy, and having the patronage of my house, I would like to buy the Merchants League. Hearing the words buy the Merchant League, he looks over at Branford. And you can see him kind of mumbling something, but you don't quite understand or hear what he's saying. And he looks back at you. And he stands up. He says, I'm not in any position to sell. Thanks for coming in. Branford will show you around. As you like. And he he walks past towards Branford and just kind of... Fell in this like frantically he, behind him. He, he like kind of bumps into uh, Bramford's shoulder and then, you know, roughly, and then turns towards Felon with his head kind of cocked, but still not facing Felon. Uh, Mr. Chaucer, uh, Felon, a um, uh, bit of a scholar. Um, I happen to notice uh, in this lovely portrait you had commissioned. Uh, oh, Jesus. Your family's beautiful, by the way. Um, but um, I just happen to notice you have a really, really interesting staff and as a man of of history and and scholarship myself i was wondering if uh you you uh if i could find out like where it came from um it looks maybe a uh, elven in make perhaps very interesting this staff has been in my family for years i had someone who will tell you all about it and he kind of walks down the hallway bangs on one of the doors uh, really hard three times and says, Tricks! You got visitors! And just kind of shuffles back down the hallway. And and Branford is mumbling some kind of apology towards Dwale and and then turns... No apology necessary. Uh, he's, Phelan, he's though, just, uh... A, a, uh, pardon, Branford. Uh, Phelan. Uh, yes. Should the yes, long, young lady who's about to step out look mm-hmm. familiar to you? Mm-hmm. Don't react immediately. <laughs> okay, that's a bit of a weird thing to say to me, but uh, <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Dwale, sir. <laughs> At this it's, it's, exchange, especially in front of her husband. <laughs> yeah, Branford definitely he kn- looks between you two and says, "Do you know Trix? Have you uh, met her?" Uh, I've do been you having one of those days. Not that I'm aware of, sir. He, he, you see some sweat come back again. Uh, and before you guys even really have time to have much of a conversation about it and about what you meant, because it looks like Branford is uncomfortable with whatever Felon knows about or thinks he knows about this woman, um, the door that uh, Mr. Chaucer had banged upon opens up. And out steps uh, a woman, uh, pretty plainly dressed, uh, loose-fitting, white clothes, boots, pretty standard, comes out and and kind of peeks her head out and looks either way and sees um, Branford and uh, looks back into her room, shuts the door behind her and and comes over to Branford. What, What was Father on about? Uh, it, Branford is, is kind of still looking between Dwale and Felon, but turns to, turns to, uh, Beatrix and, and grabs her hand and says, I'm, I'm so sorry to disturb you, dear, but, um, y- your, your father was, uh, I, I just, I thought he would want to be involved. The, the, these people are, are the ones that I told you about. The, the ones that saved me at the Brass Flagon. And she turns and, and looks each one of you in the eye and, and is like, thank you so much. I, I, I don't know what Branford would have done without you there. 
uh, if there's anything that we can do for you, any kindness that we can bestow upon you, please do. Do not hesitate to let us know. Um, um, th does she look familiar, Sid? Not that you can tell, no. Okay. She doesn't... Does she look like the the mage woman who was at the cart who then went invisible and ran away? Yeah, I mean, the the hair, the long brown hair is about the only similarity and the only okay, remembrance so of that person that you have. That's, that's what, that's what, you know, you clued me in. Uh, Felon is going to jokingly give Dwayle an, oh my God, look, and then turn back around and say, hi, uh, Felon, pleasure to meet you. Uh, and you, and she shakes your hand, but kind of looks confused and, and gives a side eye to Branford and, and says, well, uh, this doesn't explain what father, wh wh what was the knocking about? What does he want? Well, well uh, I'm afraid I caused the knocking. Um, you see, uh, I'm a bit of a scholar from Candlekeep, and uh, I noticed on this, this lovely portrait of your family um, that your father had a rather interesting staff. And uh, I couldn't figure out where it was from or what it was made. And I was wondering if perhaps you knew anything about it, where it came from, who made it. It looks, I'm betting it's Elvish. You, you, you've you come to discuss my father's staff. Well, I also, uh, m m my associate here, and I, I gestured to Briseis, and I uh, also are, are quite gifted clerics and healers. And we were wondering if you wouldn't mind if we took a look at your brother. Maybe we might be able to offer some assistance. But I, I'm also interested in the staff. Those are the two things I personally am interested in. Um, so it's just nods. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, else talk? she uh, she looks over at at Felon and was very confused about the staff conversation. She just kind of looks back at Branford like, "What is this all about?" But at the mention that you two are clerics, she kind of gives you both the, the once over, um, and and her eyes kind of grow wide when you offer to help her brother. And and she says, well, I'm afraid I, I, I don't really have the history of my father's staff, but but I would be more than happy to, to show you to my brother. I mean, I'm sure Branford's told you we, we've tried and she kind of starts gesturing with her hands, almost telling a tale of the amount of clerics and, and healers and priests and people that have come. Mm -hmm. we, we've had people from all over the up and down the coast come and try and heal him but but if you were able to save Branford against that many of the Iron Throne perhaps you can do something to help him and she seems very as she's going on she seems more and more excited like she's talking herself into this mm -hmm. um, well, um, this is... it from us to, to let her talk herself out all right uh felon would say now I mean we haven't examined him I can't promise anything but I heard of his plight and Briseis and myself have been able to work a few miracles from time to time. So, uh, maybe. Any it's attempt that, that you give us. Abso absolutely, we would, we would be happy to. Um, however, he is currently being, um, uh, and she just kind of leans in. She, he's having a bath at the moment. But um, let me go and make sure that he's, he's ready. I will... Uh, and then I'll, I'll bring you down. He's just down here, uh, down the hall. Branford, would you um, escort them down in, in about five minutes? Just give me five minutes. And and Branford is, anything you need, anything you need, anything. Uh, you know, I, I haven't even given them the tour yet. I have to give them the tour of the, the back of the house and, and uh, the other areas. Although I think, you know, more tales about this painting are in order, right, friends? And he turns to you guys and it just chuckles as if, he he's very uncomfortable it looks like right now there's too much going on um and and she nods and and nods towards uh Briseis and and Felon and I, I'll be right back and she runs back towards the room that she was just in um and you hear the door slam and then she <clears throat> in about a minute later you uh you hear you know stuff knocking around in there as Branford <laughs> starts trying to explain the tale of the the staff as far as he knows it and he's like well let's see when I came here now the staff has been used for a walking stick for about 10 years now I think is how long he's been and he's like really trying to answer your question um 
And can you all give me a perception check, please? I would love. I'll take. Uh, okay. Sorry about the staff. <laughs> yeah, Felon, you're way, like, attentive. Um, you're not sure if there was, you know, something you licked on that gem or what, <laughs> but it's got you really super paying attention to what's going on. Um, Briseis, maybe you're contemplating if a staff would be a better thing to help you stabilize. Um, and Felon, you notice, uh, Trix come out of that room and quickly dart down the hall about a minute later. <clears throat> Um, in the direction that Mr. Chaucer came from. Okay. And that was Beatrix who I saw do that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she, and did she look like she was trying to not be seen? No, but she she was, like, very hurried looking. Going, going fast. Okay. Going she, fast. Hmm. Okay. Um, so Branford sees this as well and, and kind of starts gesturing you guys towards the other room if unless someone's saying something. <clears throat> yeah, no, we're, we're, we're quite sorry to impose on your family so much uh, this soon. It's, I, I know it's a lot to, to come this late, but uh, she, she seems to be truly a lovely woman, your, your, your betrothed to be. Are you planning on having a, a large family? I mean, is, is tricks for kids? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm just curious. You know? Um at, at your <laughs> comments about uh kids, uh, he he starts to he starts to blush. Is is tricks for kids? Hmm. It, I never thought of it that it way. It seems like she would be. I think she would be. I mean, I hope that she is. I mean, she would make such lovely babies, but Thanks. is tricks for kids. Maybe I'll ask her in that way. That's clever. <laughs> I appreciate and I, that. And I, and I give him, I give him a wink and like a gentle tap on the shoulder. He he doesn't quite understand why you're doing that, <laughs> but he does it back. Oh, you do, huh? Uh, all right. Anyway, that tour that I promised you. Come on, you can bring your drinks with you. Uh, she she'll be back in just a minute anyway. Uh, so around here, and and he gestures towards the big opening. We have the uh, the the grand meeting room. Um, this is where we hold most of our business meetings, where we do uh, individual conversations with uh, potential clients that are in need around the city and in the nearby uh, towns. We have a, a bunch of dealings going on right now. And, and even though this is kind of our after hours time, you can see it's still fairly full. Um, and uh, he, he kind of gives a wave towards the person at the head of the table. And in the middle of the conversation, that person kind of waves back but like kind of rolling her eyes and uh and all around and he gestures around the room as he kind of leads you back um as you're getting into the room back around the right towards another big opening he said all around this room here we have uh bookshelves uh full of you know all of our excellent bookkeeping we're known for keeping excellent records uh, of all of our dealings in Baldur's Gate, like I said, we've we've been in this area for over 20 years, doing uh, honest, honest, good work. Uh, and he kind of leans over to Dwayne and he's like, "I doubt your friends at the Iron Throne could say the same." Oh, I don't have friends. <laughs> Just friends or friends at the Iron Throne? <laughs> mm. Friends in general. Uh, mm. Fell and nods from behind Dwayne. That's true. There. Well, you're close to earning one in me, sir. Anyway, back this way. <laughs> Groan. Uh, back this way, you'll see uh, some of our, our inner workings and sorting room. Uh, behind here is our storage, where we uh, store things and prep them for delivery. Um, but here is our sorting room. We have workers here round the clock, uh, working hard to ensure packages are counted correctly, labeled correctly, and ready for delivery. And uh, you, you guys kind of see the person that's standing near one of the bookcases and shelves as you go by, just kind of rolling her eyes um, as if Branford has done this many times and is uh, pretty much an autom automatic uh, recording at this point. Felon waves at the workers and stuff. <laughs> she, she gives you the little finger wave back. 
Um, She's into me. That's for sure what that means. And he doesn't lead you into the, the sorting room, but he kind of points back towards the door and, and you can see people uh, coming in and out of, you can see straight through um, this that room and to the back door, you see people carrying boxes and barrels in and out of the back door. And uh, at this point, it's been about 15 minutes uh, that Branford has been showing you around and giving you the tour. And uh, um, and uh, while you guys are kind of turning around in the sorting room and, and getting ready to head back out into the main area, um, you see the what looks to be the same soldier that Branford had sent off to collect uh, Mr. Chaucer come come uh, kind of jogging back towards his side and whispers something in his ear. And uh, Branford turns and, and looks at him, like, uh, confused, and says, uh, will you excuse me for just a second? And kind of pulls him over to the side. Okay. And they're having a whispered conversation. Hey, hey, Sam. Yes, sir. Hey, could I maybe, 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 maybe do a little of that from across the room? On our dear bud, buddy Branford as he's having this conversation. Oh, that was almost a 19, and I was so scared. Oh, baby. And I'm just I'm just going to listen in on his thoughts as this conversation is happening, basically. Okay, so um, his thoughts as this conversation is happening is, uh, but, but she was just here. Uh, how could he be missing? He can't walk. Well, not well, anyway. Uh oh. And then um, uh -oh. you you get a general dun, sense dun, of like, w like just worry, and uh -oh. you start reading thoughts about wild possibilities of like tricks running off with uh, the the handsome guy from the Iron Throne that he knows, and um, you know someone coming in and and you know breaking in to uh, the the back door and stealing stuff. And then uh, you also get a brief flash of uh, him thinking, like, eyeing you in, in his thoughts the, ah. and you running away with tricks. And then Dwayle also. And then he kind of shakes his head and, and whispers back down to, uh, to the gentleman. And uh, the gentleman goes back running off towards... Uh, towards the same hallway that he came from. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I thought I was going to say, is everything all right, Branford? Um, as, the, as the spell fades off, you hear, <laughs> no. And then he <laughs> says, yes, yes. Um, they're just, you know, tied up. Uh, some, some business dealings back there. Uh, Mr. Chaucer wanted to make sure that Trix uh, knew the conversation that he had with uh, Mr. Dwale um, Lord. previously. Lord Dwale previously. And he, he's kind of got his hand by his face now and is doing, like, messing with his glasses and just kind of um, seems a little startled. Okay. So, like, basically he's doing all of the stereotypical I'm lying actions. Slash nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alright, Fallon's not going to push the issue. I wish I had message. But I did. Um, so, Branford leads you guys back towards the, the main area. Um, and as you guys are coming back towards near the painting... The same gentleman that he sent off comes back and is just walking slowly up the hallway and him and Branford make eye contact and he just starts shaking his head at which um, Branford 
Branford is is turns to all of you and says, um, uh, something has come up. Would you um, w would you care to accompany me uh, uh, down this this way? I believe Trix is ready with Dario. Um, if you'll you'll come down this way, I, I'm not quite sure what's keeping her. And he kind of looks towards the the runner, and uh, the runner just gives him a big shrug, like. Mm. His bedroom's just down the hall. Sure, I, of course. Oh, do lead on. Just keep in mind why you're our first choice. You know, I do have to apologize, and as you guys are walking down the hall, he turns back towards Dwayle and is kind of talking to him. I, I don't know what uh, what that reaction is about. I, I mean, I know Trix cares deeply for her brother, so she probably, you know, was just distracted by that. Um, and I'm, I'm sure she would be more than willing to hear out your business deal. She really, and he kind of whispers a little bit, she really is the one that handles most things like this um, ever since Mr. Chaucer has has taken to his old age uh, hasn't treated him very well so she has taken up more of a uh supervisory role and, and she would be willing to hear you out and as you guys enter the room he's kind of finishing the sentence and he's looking back and forth he looks at the bed for a good second and kind of trails off and then there's uh you know he he looks under the bed um he starts to pull the chair out and looks under the chair and uh, opens the chest. Branford. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Lord, Lord Dwayle. Yes. Um, where? Do me the kindness. Stand still. Put your hands behind your back. Take a few deep breaths. Are we arresting him? Mm hmm. No. Oh. I have no interest in arresting him. He was all for that until Velen whispered, "Are we arresting him?" And then he just kind of like his eyes got a little wider. Like what? Decide what you want to do. Stop flurrying about. Obviously, the entire Merchants League is being mismanaged. I suspect your young lady has just fled like a criminal in the night. And your father-in-law-to-be is getting into his dotage. <clears throat> Now, if you wish to go running after your young lady, do feel free to do so. It would remove at least one thing here that's bothering me. He, he, um, he does what you said in the beginning. He puts his hands behind his back and he starts doing the deep breaths. And he's, he's uh, looking between you and focusing on you and then kind of looking at the bed and just kind of looking back and forth and like he's trying to process all the things that are happening at once. Uh, and almost like an out of body saying, I really don't have the authority to do anything like that. Uh, uh, but he looks like he's almost in complete shock. Not quite at the stage Bryce was when she saw that gem slash rock, but pretty close. Uh, you know, sweating is not even subtle anymore. And he's just looking very confused. Um, if anybody is looking around the room, can you please roll? Perception, investigation, whichever. I would love. I will give help to Felon. Oh. Thanks, bud. The second roll was much better. <laughs> Thanks, my dude. Assuming that's allowed. He he did say it sort of after I'd rolled. Yeah. yeah, the number hadn't popped up on my side yet. Well, actually, wasn't it popped up? Like, he said it, like, as you were rolling, so. Yeah, I didn't see it, but I just want to make sure that that's cool with the GM before I assume I got a 26. I don't want to be that guy. I'm very self-involved, so I'm a much better manager than I am a receiver. <laughs> Dwell's so, so like, Felon, check over underneath that, and oh, make sure you get that corner over there. <laughs> so, yeah, Dwell is, is great at executing what to look at, and Felon, you're like a hound dog, apparently. Uh, good at sniffing stuff out. You got your musical number. Yay. Now I'm going to have to listen to it to get it out of my head. 
Well, that's great because we do need to take a break here. Oh, excellent. Look at my timing. But before you go on break with okay. a 26, excellent. you are able to discover that uh, y you see something that looks off in this corner here. Um, mm -hmm. You're you're staring at you're like there's there's no exit here. There's only a couple small windows. You come to the corner and something catches your eye. Whether it's you know just a a bit of a uh, anomaly in the wall, um, you're not quite sure. But uh, coming over to closer examine it, you notice that it looks as though there is a definitive line along the wall on each side of the corner here. Where mm -hmm. it could be the size of a doorway. Okay, excellent. Uh, Ellen is going to to pull out a dagger and sort of shove it into the crack, oh, and Felon. then use Felon. it. To, ah, ah! Felon, not while I'm working, Dwayne. Felon, what do we remember about trying to open things? And then I'm uh, he's going to like pop the door open with the dagger, oh, or at least okay. attempt to. I don't know if that's going to work. I think the lesson we learned is that him trying to open things causes prophecies. That's true. Well, we could get some sleep and prophecy out of this. You know what? Continue. <laughs> <laughs> we might get we might get twelve solid felon free hours. <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll. <laughs> so you're taking out your dagger and you're stabbing at the wall. Go ahead and roll an attack with your dagger. Okay. Uh... Get that wall. Second. I just wrote dagger into my inventory, so there's no attack. <laughs> okay, there we are. Fifteen. All right. So you're you're stabbing all along that line or weird anomaly that you see, and it, you know one, two, and on your third stab into the wall, um, your foot wobbles, and uh, a a. a group of planks kind of start to pop up a little. <laughs> Reveal your secrets to me, Wall. I, I continue along that path to, to and like lift up the floorboards and stuff. Yeah, so it looks like, as though the, the wall was just a, a button of some kind or a stabbing device. Um, you and stab open the, a button. Yeah, you can sta you stab the hell out of that button and mm -hmm. you uh, pop open uh, a hinged what looks to be a kind of a trap door. And it pops open, um, and, you know, looking down, you see darkness. I, I, I point at it, and I look at Branford. And I'm like, ring any bells? He's already peeking over your shoulder, and uh, you turning around and asking him, ring any bells? He puts his hands up. He's, he's too stunned to even say anything, and he's just shaking his head. And he's almost as curious as you are as he, like, kind of leans back over and looks down that way. Mm. And this is where we'll take our break. Break! 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 I would just like to say, for the record, that I was burning that entire conversation to figure out a way to work that in. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was eating at me with a fury that I could not describe, and I was... I was <laughs> Bring it over in my head every way possible. <laughs> and the only way I could get it to get it to work was as a question. I knew it would eventually be coming. <laughs> At least you were prepared. That, that was a well-played question, though. <laughs> All right, coffee. Yay.
Now, see, aren't you guys glad we came to the Merchants League? We can take them over and feel no guilt at all. They certainly seem to be uh, kind of nuts or weird or shady. I am impressed with Thwail's dedication to the ultimate goal. What's that? The, the purchase. Purchase. He, sh he showed up here 20 years ago and gave them an evil staff just so that 20 years later he could show up <laughs> and, and take it over. I've been laying the groundwork on this one since before I was born. Man, why on the Google search for old white guy does Samuel L. Jackson show up? That feels He's like in... not applicable. He's in everything. Right, but he is not an old white guy. But he plays one on TV. No, he doesn't. Oh, I'm sure he has. All right. Do we are we waiting on some nope. peeps still? I uh, haven't heard Rob come back yet, and he's still on headphones off. All righty. I just want to say, even though I know I've tried not to use it in the past, the Polygon Reveal Tour is literally my worst enemy <laughs> on Roll Twenty. Really? It's, it's it so, so useful. Bad. I, I, use, it. I use it all the time. I use it exclusively at this point. The polygon reveal did. one? Mm -hmm. Oh, I hate that one. Yeah, Why sorry. that one? It's so good. The last time we looked at the chat, everybody was still versed. People were still muted. Oh, no, but you, we, were, we were just gathering, and I saw oh, you okay. were headphones off, so I was like, he can't hear us. Yeah, I didn't have that uh, window up. Sorry. Come back to us. Welcome back, then. Thank you. All right. So, despite Dwayle's best attempts at staying on topic, uh, Felon has stabbed a wall and discovered a floor uh, that has a door. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So you're peering into blackness, uh, Branford included. All right. So we're going down it, right? Oh, I don't think there's anything that could possibly stop you at this point. Right. I just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page before I well, jump in it. Before you do. Did Branford just pass out? He turned into a ninja. She's peering into the darkness. Oh, okay. <laughs> Felon is going to have a hand on his shoulder so he doesn't jump in, by the way. He, he's, like, clambering, like, on hands and knees on the desk to peer over you guys. Because he's... Huh? What? Come here. He looks like a... a kind of like a scolded child as he gets off the desk and walks over towards Doyle. It is very likely that your league is about to suffer a change of management. Are you aware of this? A change in management? You just saw your young lady take off running, yes? Well, she was... She was... She just... And he kind of points towards the door. He's, she was just... And... She was supposed to get the and points at the bed. The Dario, mm -hmm. um, and he puts his hand up to his mouth again and kind of covers it. No, are you comfortable running the league yourself? His eyes bug out. I did not think so. 
What I would like you to do is send a runner down to the docks, have them inquire after Tagar Luskin, have them summon him here, along with some of his men, in case there is any trouble. They will make sure that during this little disruption that you're having, none of the Iron Throne take advantage of it. Do you have a runner you can trust to go? Oh, almost on cue, the, the guy from before leans in the hallway and just kind of tips his head. <laughs> Yo! Over. No. Good and efficient one. Uh, he he kind of leans in and is like, always looking for more work, sir. Excellent. You'll do well. You overheard? Yeah. Tagar at the docks? Hmm. In the future, don't admit that you've overheard. It can get you in trouble. But for now, it's beneficial. And he he, uh, he turns to go, and he's like, I know lots of other things, too, sir. And just takes off. Well, I think he likes you. Uh, he didn't give him the twiddly fingers like you got the other time. Oh, but... okay. Well, never mind, then. That's obviously not the case, then. No. But, uh, can we can we jump down the hall? Bramford, you should probably stay here. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I assume is there any is it lit down this way or is it dark or all you see is darkness right now. You don't see any light down there. Well, okay, but all, what do I see within sixty feet of said darkness? You see dirt and a uh, direction downward. So it's just like a like a pathway that descends down like like a dirt tunnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I make out any sort of uh, is it like fresh disturbances, footprints, anything like that? Yeah, you can see you can see uh, one pair of, and it's not quite footprints together like you're used to seeing. It's more like in a in a line or something. You're, hmm. But you see footprints, and then you see um, possibly like somebody what, being dragged. You see like a a wheel mark or, oh, or okay. a straight line, two straight lines. Well, how how big is this like the like the tunnel? I'm sorry, what was that? Like, how big is it? Like, like, how high is the ceiling? How wide is it? So you, you're you having a hard time telling from there. Um, but, I mean, you'd guess you'd have to crouch to get into it. Oh, okay. Not on hands and knees, but definitely crouched. Right. So are you heading down there? Um, I don't even see what everybody else is doing. Like, I don't think we're, I didn't assume we were waiting for this runner to return. Oh, no. Uh, it'll be some time before he returns. Uh, Branford, I'm sure, can keep things running as usual here and go inform Mr. Chaucer. Uh, not to worry. Phelan, Briseis, Cloud, I'm sure you want to make sure that if there is any chance that Beatrix is innocent or can be captured rather than killed, you will take that option. At, at you saying uh, <sighs> tricks killed, he he kind of snaps too, and he says, "No, no, don't don't hurt her." Um, uh, she, uh, and he kind of straightens up his tie and and looks at Dwell. I will I will hold down um the the merchant league goings on here. I I I would prefer that we refrain from telling Mr. Trosser uh, uh, until I have more information to give him uh, Lord Dwale. But please, and he turns towards Briseis, because that's who Dwale just talked to. He said, don't, don't, don't hurt her. I, I don't know what she's, she's gotten herself mixed up in, but please don't hurt her. Is there anything else about her and her brother we should know? Uh, so, so we I, don't be blind? I mean, I, I had no idea anything was going on. I, I, your guess is as good as mine, but she is good in her heart. I know it. So you're being honest with us? You're not kidding about tricks? She has never done anything to wrong myself or this, this league. She's taken care of everybody for as mm. long as I've known her. Fair enough. 
If something's wrong, surely it is somebody else directing her. Perhaps she's under one of the, the spells, one of those spells, and he kind of points towards the, the two people that use magic. Perhaps she's under a spell of some kind. I don't know, but, but please, please. We'll see what we can do, Brantford. They are forgiving and charitable to a fault, but they will do their best. Thank you. Thank you. And he, he looks genuinely at all of you. Please, bring her back safely. She, she will pay for anything that she may have done, but, but please, don't harm her. And he just kind of, you know, shrinks down again and looks off into the distance. Cloud, did you say it was dirt down in that hole? <sighs> I, I uh, hate it. <clears throat> un unfortunately for you, yes, Dwell. Oh, you're gonna hate it. It looks a little, uh, not muddy, but like, you know, cold and damp is the kind of smell and air that you're getting from down there. The entire world is made up of dirt. I don't think you can escape it. You can. You can. That's why we have houses and cities. It's specifically why they were made. To get us away from the dirt. Why would you have a lovely city with a beautiful house and then put a dirt hole under it? It's a bolt hole. It's not that much more expensive to have it lined nicely with flagstone. I think, I think it is much more expensive. And then, and all the walls. well, of course, you'd have to kill all the workers that flagstone it as well. It gets expensive. While this discussion is going Killing on, Cloud is like is less expensive. You don't have to pay them. Yeah. Uh, come on. And while all this is going on, Cloud is like stretching out and like limbering up and stretching <laughs> his arms and legs out. All right. So you guys are heading on down. Cloud's all limbered up. Um, what order are you guys heading down in? Probably the one we're in. Yeah, that's fair. Alrighty. So, Cloud, you head down first. Um, like I said, the, the ceiling seems to be pretty low, but uh, you, you can make it without getting all four paws dirty. Fair. Um, and you're, you're climbing down, uh, and you have the 60 feet dark vision, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so you're climbing down, and you uh, you get to a certain point where you know there's people behind you because you know you they're your friends. Right. You I can know hear, what they I can like. feel them there, but yep, but you can't see anything. So we hit pitch um, blackness eventually. And you're going down for quite some time. You kind of start to lose track of how many feet, how many sixty feet that you've gone down. And uh, after you're crawling for a good couple minutes, you see something ahead. Uh, very faintly, you see um, glowing, uh, like some kind of glowing ember, or it's a, like a dark orange glow. Okay. And, and as you kind of crawl towards that, um, you the ceiling starts to get a little bit uh, higher, and you find yourself in a like cave like room uh the ceilings have greatly opened up uh you're you're guessing 20 30 feet high now um all around you the walls and the ground is is loose earth um occasional other debris um but it is dark very dark except for the glowing embers that you see from what you're guessing is a fire pit in the corner uh, from that light uh, emitting from there, you, you see the faint outline of a desk and a chair and uh, what looks to be some boxes or barrels up against the other wall. Um, you see uh, on the ground, you see, uh, you know, faint footprints kind of all over um, right. from the desk to everywhere. And uh, yeah. And the walls, are the walls like dirt or are they rock? They're all, uh, as you put your hand, your paw against them, you, it's all compacted dirt. Okay. 
And you see that all around uh, as far as you can see. Hmm. Can we see if the more recent footprints going anywhere? Uh, whoever's looking for that, you can roll a survival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you guys just see um you don't see anything more recent than the other, you just see a lot of them. <clears throat> and I assume the opening towards the left side probably opens and goes off somewhere because it looks like the rest of it's closed off. Uh, yeah, so if you're looking at that, that it's all wall, as far as you can see. Oh, this is wall on, on this side, or whoops, over on the left side over here, my bad. Um, you said there's crates over here in the corner, and then a desk? So yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so there's no obvious path forward. No, I mean, you don't see a way out besides the way that you guys just came through. Okay. All right. Well, clearly they just tunneled out like moles, right? What's what, what's this thing? Or is that not a thing? Should I not worry? There's like a little, a little, a little blue purple thing. dot. Yeah, a little blue thing. Purple or whatever. What is that? Someone dropped their D20 on the ground? <laughs> kind of what it looks like. I'm zoomed in all the way. Let me, let me get enhanced. No, it's a, it's a sprinkled donut, maybe? <laughs> While Phelan's you... digging in after the little purple thing, Dwell will be checking out the desk looking for the papers. I'll uh, poke around the crates and boxes. All right, Felon, can you uh, roll an investigation for me? I would love to. And tell me exactly what you're doing to investigate said spot. Uh, is it on the ground, I'm assuming? <laughs> yeah, the spot that you see is, is on the ground, yep. Okay, I'm going to bend down, I'm going to look at it, and then I'm going to start uh, gently poking and prodding at it, seeing what it is. It's the tip of a purple worm. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So as you, you crouch down, it, it's definitely not the same color as the rest of the dirt. Um, and and you're kind of reaching out to poke it. Can you give me a wisdom save, please? A wisdom save? Why do I need to make that? Oh, God, yeah. Sin? Okay, that's pretty good. You if so with a 19 you um you feel like like uh parts of you pulling and separating almost for a brief second and and then it goes away oh no that's a really troubling feeling uh phone's gonna stand back up and say there's a there's a bad thing here there's Did a bad thing it? on the floor no this... i didn't lick it but it attacked me when i touched it Another one? Uh, what what does it physically look like in game? The what does it look like on the floor? Yeah. From what you can see, it is a um like a half a circle or, mm -hmm. or a quarter of a circle. Um it's a, a light blue purple color. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. it has some dirt over the top of it so it looks like it's it's been there for a while you're not quite sure okay can i dig it out without touching it like using my dagger or something just like jimmy under it pop it out yeah i mean you can start digging around it with your dagger sure that's what i'm gonna do Uh, you, you dig around <laughs> with your dagger, and uh, because you're you're taking careful, uh, you're being very careful not to touch the actual spot itself. Um, you, you just kind of dig a little trench around it. 
It is n- unmoved. Okay, and I can't, like, stick the dagger underneath the object and then, like, pry it up to make it pop out of the ground? Yeah, you would. You think that if you want to do that, do you? there's no way that you could actually do that without touching it again. <sighs> Bummer. Okay. Hmm. What do we think it does? Well, what did you say it did to you? I don't know. It 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 felt like it was trying to pull me apart. Mm, it's a bit small for a teleportation circle. What if? Uh, here, uh, give me ten minutes. I'm gonna sit and think about it really hard. Well, while you're doing that, I'll take a look at this paperwork. All right, so, so Felon, you're taking a few minutes to try and figure out what the heck that is. In the meantime, uh, Dwayle, you are investigating the desk area. On your way over, you pass by that uh, fire pit on the ground, and you see um, that something was clearly recently burned. You, you see uh, the edges of what looks to be parchment. And you come over to the desk, and you see a book uh, opened. And there are a couple pages torn out as well as a uh, a decent-sized hole through the center of the later half of it. Hmm. Almost as though there's, um, you know, like a placeholder, not like a something stabbed it. Felon. Mm. They burn yes. books. Oh no, that's troubling. That is. How do you how do you know that? Well, here's a book that they've burnt. Monsters. Let me let me see it. He picks up what's left of the charred bits and then the book as well. And there. I am going to. I'll I'll look at it later. I have to <laughs> think about this. He he's got so many things. Not a thing mending will fix, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. I'm going around. I'm playing Fallout. I'm going around a collecting the charred books breakout. just in case I can get something out of them. All right. Um. Okay. So so Felon's busy. Uh, C- Cloud, you said you were investigating the the crates and barrels and stuff. Yeah. All right, so you're uh, the the first one that, and they seem to be haphazardly stacked over there. The first crate you pop open, uh, lots of candles. Ooh, like, do were, was there anything physically to differentiate our our special candles from regular candles, other than the flame? Uh, no, just the flame. I'm gonna uh, I'll take one over to the embers of the fire pit and see if I can get it to light. Yep, you uh, stick it in the embers, and there's there's still enough life left in that fire, and it it lights right up, and it turns that that weird color as it sparks to life that you and remember. I turn around, holding it up in one hand, and I gesture at it with the others. Uh, while this is going on, Briseis, what are you doing? Um, she rolled the sixteen on survive. Well, she was trying to. Because they ran, ran down here, supposedly, trying to see, and, like, there's nothing over this way. This is another wall. Yeah, as as far as you can tell, uh, it's another wall. Um, uh, your survival didn't give you any information about the footsteps, but you're welcome to investigate she, yeah, the wall. Yeah, because I think she's going to just, like, follow the line of the wall and see if there's another weirdness. Are you taking up Felon's method of licking it, or are you just kind of, like, no. touching and pushing against it? She'll touch and like yeah. shove at things that look. Uh, where's my survival? Nope. So, um, you know, you're you're looking at the wall and you're just wondering where else you're supposed to go if not down this way. And as you go to give the wall a shove, you fall flat on your face, and the illusion that was the wall oh. is now revealed. Oh. And it reveals a lot of darkness. Ow. Uh, 
Does her dark vision see anything? Um, with your with your dark vision, you see um, what Felon was. <laughs> good old tool. <laughs> uh, you see the uh, the the circle that he was in identifying is indeed a teleportation circle, and you see the finished result of it on the floor. I'm not sure she'd know what a teleportation circle. Yeah, she, well, she fell through. Yeah, you you fell on the ground, and, and maybe you didn't know what the teleportation circle was, but it fell in completely immersed in identifying what it is. It's like, ah, now I can see it. Great. As oh. you fell on the floor. Oh, hey, thanks, Bryce Ace. Good job. You're welcome. Huh. That's interesting. <laughs> Guess that explains why I was trying to pull me apart. Good thing. Because I realized I have to touch it to identify it, so not going to do that. <laughs> I wonder where it goes, though. <sighs> it, as you guys are gazing um, on on past the wall that was previously there, um, you guys see more sets of those tracks all around. Um, and you're really, you know, between looking back at the room that you just came from in the tunnel and looking as far ahead as you can see in the darkness, you're... You, this is much bigger than you were expecting to find. Um, it, it's very large, um, and you're not hearing a whole lot of anything uh, from your experience in uh, underground and things like that before. You're used to hearing, um, you know, skittering of rats or bugs or, you know, just general life noises. You're not hearing any of that down here. Um, you do see a number of uh, like piles of, of dirt or something along the walls at different intervals. But that's about all you can see from here. Okay. <sighs> all right, well, um... <clears throat> Hey, Briseis, can you do me a favor? What do you need? Can you hold this? And Felon holds out his, his backpack. And she'll take it. Excellent. And I step on the teleportation circle. Oh. Uh, Wait! Uh, <laughs> well, I gotta know. I gotta know where it is, and Felon's not gonna let it rest until he knows where it goes. All right. So <laughs> as you take the backpack and before you even have a minute to after this long, you guys have been with Felon long enough to know after a second what he's planning, I'm sure uh, he Some, something is going to your eyes. She doesn't have enough arms to grab him with. <laughs> <laughs> that was a secret plan. He wanted to give you something to hold so you couldn't tackle him. <laughs> she could theoretically still tackle him, but... uh more of a body check at that point. <laughs> you might taste more dirt if you do that also. Um, Felon, do you have any light source on you right now? Um, I have dark vision and I can cast light. All right, so you have dark vision, and if and when you cast light, let me know. But for this mm. brief moment, uh, as you feel the spell that attempted to grab you earlier, finally do so. Uh, it kind of feels good to be pulled apart for a second as you are zoomed up into uh, a much oh, smaller no. area. Oh, no. So I, uh, I oh, go I ahead. See, I, oh, see, I turn and I offer the, uh, the, the green candle to, to dwell. Do you need something to see by? or? Oh. Mm. Well, at the moment, oh. the uh, light of the fire is doing fine by me, but do blow that out before it ruins our equipment. Oh, no. <laughs> While well, he tries to figure out what equipment he's referring to, so there's nothing that I have to worry about, at least. Uh, I, uh, takes, I takes the blow it out. It out. I, no, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to blow it out, and I was going to toss it into the fire pit. Uh, that, no, that's oh, burning uh, it. That's, uh... Oh, well... <sighs> Cloud. You see the fire roar back to life for a second, and a bright green burst of flame. Should we go after Felon? I think that might be advisable. Um, no. Where there was no sound before, now you you just hear a, a very, very faint... Mm, mm. 
coming from out down the, the corridor? From down the corridor, yep. I'll, uh, my ears perk up and my head swivels towards it, and I, I'll turn and start to uh, kind of creep my way quietly, whispering, Felon! All right, so as you guys proceed, we will jump to uh, Felon. You have landed uh, in, in a uh, almost a soft spot. Your, your feet land right next to something squishy. Uh, looking down, you see a big group of uh, mushrooms hmm, underneath your feet nice. to the right. That's nice. Yeah, not really what I'm looking at, but that's nice, I suppose. And uh, could I have one from the uh, group of others roll a d20? Felon, if you look to your other side, you will see mm -hmm. um, bones on the ground and what look to be two coffins. Yeah, you kind uh, of buried the lead on that one, didn't you, didn't you said? Oh, Not the most me. important thing. Coffins aren't always the most important thing in the room. Okay. One of, All right. So. Well, you still see one of us roll, or was that somebody here rolling that? No, I heard I heard roll a d20, so I rolled a d20. Okay, that was you. Yes, okay. that was correct. Sorry. Oh, because, yeah, nobody else's name popped up, so I thought there was nothing attached to it. I didn't realize that you were the last one to do an action, so it was... Oh, yeah, no, that was, that was my light as I moved away from the firelight. Well, no, no, I saw the light. I was just saying, it didn't occur to me that because there was no name attached to the d20 roll that it was yours gotcha. for some reason, because I'm stupid tonight. Happens <laughs> to all of us. Yeah, yeah well. some of us jump on teleportation circles. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, baby. All right. Well, can't can't stop me in a character now. <laughs> he said. All right. So, Felon, what are you doing with this information? And then we'll bounce yeah. back and forth. What can I can I pop open this bad boy right here? You absolutely can do that. Mm -hmm. You just gonna dagger it like you daggered the wall earlier? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that thing's getting a lot of use this episode. It's a useful. It's a useful tool. Every adventure needs rope and a dagger. So I feel, before I say I, it again, I feel like I remember you actually carry a pry bar, but you just don't use it. No, that was that was Malik. <laughs> oh, sorry. <yeah. laughs> that was Malik. Same, same Sean, different character. Correct. I do need to get Fallon a crowbar though help with his hate stream. For science. It's a science crowbar. Yeah. Look, if Gordon Freeman can have a science crowbar, then Felon can have a science crowbar. That is true. Yeah. All right. So you uh, you step over the bones and you jab your dagger into the coffin. And uh, it, it doesn't really give you much trouble. It pries open. Uh, but I am going to need you to please roll initiative. No, of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You can only Why? stab and step on and lick so many things before initiative hits. Okay. That's that's the way of um, life, really. I, I will think say that was in the dungeon master. It's got some for as much yeah. licking as he does, there's been very few mimics to lick back. Uh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> It's Scribbles like the, notes frantically. The kid from a Christmas story, but so much worse. Perseus, should I go after him? I, I think we probably all should. Yeah, everybody can roll initiative. Everybody. Everyone. Everybody wants to be happy. Well, she's thinking of jumping on the, the thingy. No, 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 no. No. And as we're getting set up, ominous dice rolls. Yay. Analog dice rolling. Ooh. Okay. Oh, someone's mommy's down here. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. I, that's the last thing I expected to be in there. <laughs> I've been totally bamboozled. <laughs>
It's really hard trying to get this on the stream. Didn't think this through. Zoom way out. Well, yeah, and then everybody's like a pinprick. That's, but that's okay. Fine. Sorry it's to right, the one or two people that are watching. <laughs> I mean, you know that Dwell insists upon his close up, so. You gotta do that. I mean, I was really hoping that they both roll poorly. Not just one. Oh, no, and the one closest to me is the one that rolled better than me. Uh-oh. All right, uh, so... Dwell. Uh, mm. here. Oh, no. And then you, and then you kind of... Gut feeling, feel, t fell in touch something he's not supposed to. And then another, oh, no! Dylan. Uh are the Onos coming consistently from the north? Uh yes. They definitely sound like they're coming from the north. Dylan, make some light. I can't see a damn thing. Well busy. Why can't I move? Oh uh, you're we're going to just try and do this here, and that to there, and then I can't see a thing. So then from there, uh, I will take, I will hold an action to firebolt, no, yeah, to firebolt anything I don't like. That you can see? No, just anything I don't like. That's a, okay. That's a stressingly vague definition. <laughs> He's gonna get so much dirt. <laughs> don't like the dirt. I don't like. Yes. Uh, should anything come within my uh, range of sight, which is about forty feet, uh, I think it's my light spell. Uh, then I will firebolt it. Got it. Forty. Okay. okay. So you should have forty feet. I should have forty feet on my light spell. Okay, uh, well, I fixed A. Uh, Briseis, if you want to take it away. She's going to just start. I think she's just going to dash as far up as she can get, which is up here ish. And she can see in the dark 60 feet. So. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. At least she didn't run into the water. <laughs> okay, let me make sure that. Uh, okay. So that is Twail. Uh, that is Briseis. Uh, and then you hear a groan, uh, Felon. Mm, yeah, I do. Uh, you hear a groan, but also an accompanying splash of water uh, as a white bursts out of this water feature uh, and takes a... Do not like... like oh. Yeah, go ahead and uh, don't a like water that. Feature. Can I, I'm, I'm reacting with the angry face to that. Ah, uh, Yes. Definitively do not like waterlogged undead. Perseus, mind your horns. <laughs> uh, and it kind of has the same idea to mind her horns.
Just... Uh, so a 20 okay? 20 hits. Yeah. It, it, it kind of gives an uh, that undead brrr, cheer. <laughs> Uh, and then, Felon, you definitely do hear the actual moaning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, as it looks uh, and makes a glare at you. No, oh, no. Felon always looks at things he shouldn't. It's always taking advantage of him. <laughs> Oh, nice. I was going to say, at least this was my good save, and then I'm like, that's what you say before you roll a one, so don't say anything. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so, uh, then it, uh, being extremely disparaging of you, uh, tries to punch you. No, it punches me. Uh, con save. Cursed. Uh, oh, no, not on this character, too! Ouch. Okay. Oh, goodness. Oh, Woo! suck it! Wow. Okay, me. You son of a bitch. Felon's invincible. That's going to take 10 damage, though. That hurts. Rip temporary hit points. Holy shit, the cursed target can't regain hit points? Oh no! Oh, that's so bad! Alright, so Felon, as this, uh, as this, uh, as this wrapped being, uh, decides to, uh, give it to you playground fight style, what do you do? Uh, say, oh no, this is really... This is so much worse than I thought it was going to be. Um, okay, so first things first, we are going to take the disengage action. And then we're going to probably run away. Uh, when I when I get to here, I, uh, it's 10 feet of movement. When I get to there, I'm going to spin around and say, eat this. And I'm going to drop a spiritual weapon with my bonus action. I'm going to drop it right, just right here, and swing at the mummy who tried to swing at me. Well, successfully swung at me. It wasn't a try. Yep, it's a cart. And uh, does a 17 hit? I believe I honestly didn't even make the token for these because I thought nobody was going to poke at these coffins. <laughs> Never. Well, ever. Well, well. Oh, oh, silly uh, case. Who have, have you been you playing met with? Met me? I know. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Excellent. Eight force damage. And I say, ha ha, take that. And I run the remaining 25 feet of my movement down to here. He does indeed take that. And uh, as I come around the corner, I say, we have a problem. Because, yes, I can just barely see Briseis. <laughs> oh, no, that's the, 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 when you get past to hit this point, it's all bright light. Oh, perfect. Oh, excellent. Okay. So that, I can see that like, yellow boundary is my light ball. Oh, perfect. Okay, excellent. Yes. I we have a problem. Two I don't problems. see a boundary. Yeah, I don't see any boundary either. Uh, oh, sorry. It's right uh, 40 feet. Uh, oh, because we can't see the circle on your Oh, you can't see my circle. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Ah, okay. Oh, so yeah. So I can definitely see you guys. So yeah. Like, we have a we have two problems. Three. Well, that's less of a problem to be honest with you. All right. Uh and then mummy number two. Uh, it stares at you. Looks like he really <laughs> wants to hit you with his fist. Uh, aren't I? Aren't I immune to it now? Because I passed the save. Yeah, 
Yes. Of all mummies. The, the mummy, mummy lords. lords. Is he a mummy lord? Was he nope. nobility? No. If you say yes, I'm so in trouble. Mummy. So then he'll uh, he'll dash instead. Uh, and then kind of in place, um, Felon, you can fear you can feel the uh, the non breathing of uh, of this mummy following behind you. Um, and you also are surprised by the appearance of not one but a second white um, spring out of the water before Cloud has a chance to act. Uh, he will take two shots at Briseis. Good cover, Bree. Ow. As it uh, thump thumps uh, and tries to bring out two more shots, not receiving a firebolt, um, it, it steps out of the water, kind of shakes off a little bit. Cloud. Oh yeah. Okay. Very hit points. Um. Mm -hmm. Five. Did did either one of those two get? They haven't been hit by anything, have they? This one uh, got a firebolt. That one got a firebolt. Okay. Um. Well, it's fifty-five to there. Um. Hundred and five to there. Noted. All right. Um, can I, 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 if the light ends here, I can probably see that fell that something's fighting him up there or is, is coming after him based on the edge of the light um, radius. Cause it's only like 35 feet from the. Yeah. Okay. Um, <sighs> I'll uh, take a, take a breath. I'll kick in feline agility. 55, 60 to here. Um, and in the process, I will um, actually hold on. With extra attack. Do we determine whether or not I can split my regular attack up over, like I could do a move and then do the second attack later? I don't think they're both against the same person. Yes. Okay. And yes. So basically, I'll start, you know, tucking down and running, starting to to whirl the staff around. Um, and as I run past this one, I'll just give it a swing, um, two handed, and using mobile. Um, uh, if I make a melee attack against a creature, I don't provoke opportunities for the rest of the turn, whether I hit it or not. So, gonna. Come through, try to wail on this one. <laughs> totally whiff. Um, and then just keep on running. <laughs> 60. Uh, so 105 to there. Oops, not there. Here. Um, and so there's some sort of shambling bandage wrapped undead thing. I agree with all of those assessments. Okay. Um, and as I, as I come running up alongside Felt, I'm like, what did you, what did you get yourself into? Um, I will take a swing at it. 24. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Kill it. Cloud. Um, Nine points of damage. Yes. And then the damages. if it does not drop, I will spend a bonus action to spend a key point to kick in patient defense. It does Good not choice. fall. Okay. 
Uh, and then as uh, as it looks like we come to the top of the order, the trio has been completed. Oh, fun. Uh, this one uh, doesn't look like he even owns a bow. Uh, goes to steps up out of the water, uh, tries to swipe at Briseis, but also nope. instead of attacking with his uh, weapon again, it looks like he just tries to touch you a little bit. Oh. Yeah. Less is much. Shield. <laughs> Not so much. Um, and then, uh, with the emergence of the whites, uh, with Felon running away like crazy, Doyle, you've seen all of these things. What happens next? And yes, you are muted. I like being muted. Uh, <laughs> cluttering up my field of fire, I will drop a uh, flaming sphere here. Smack it into this fellow, I hope. And leave it sitting there. Those flaming spheres provide light. And I need that. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Ten points of damage. And then so close. So I was gonna back up a bit and take as much cover as this wall could provide. Okay, that was uh this bonus oh yeah, regular action. Bonus regular action. Ram. Okay. Yep. So flaming sphere there. Smacked into him, and then back it up, and bonus action. Go team, go! So, with uh, with the cheering, uh, Briseis. I don't know. I don't know if you feel that cheering, but he's definitely cheering as this white decides to come behind you uh, and draw his sword. Uh oh. Uh, and that is unfortunately oh. the second of the two numbers, as he does not. Uh. Reach. <sighs> he's still up. Uh, and then he he's gonna trust that again. No. All right, then he does not trust that. Um, these whites they they look like they've been uh, in the water for just moments. Um, it, even after this, even after this, the one behind you uh, looks like he's drying off in these seconds. Uh, what are you doing with your slightly dried white? He is, well, he is going to cast spiritual guardians. Let's try to scoot this way to get that guy up there, possibly. Then let me cast it. And is that burst immediate too? Or is that on turn? I believe it's uh... on start of turn. Thank you. Cure. You'd think I know, but no. Hmm. I don't know why it didn't. Oh, that's why. Make him roll all the wisdom saves. All of them. And she is going to... As she's drawing her sword, she is also going to cast her spiritual weapon. So, that one... Um, unfortunately, like you've already done one regular spell for the turn, so anything else has to be a cantrip. Uh okay. Never mind. I will remember that one day. Uh, yeah. So will every cleric ever, because we all have great <laughs> bonus actions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. 
then I could bonus action Sacred Flame one of them. Because <laughs> it's a Kiachu. Uh, is that a bonus or a regular? Uh, That's a regular. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Never mind. Then she will hold her place, draw her glowy sword, and be ready. Ready indeed. As uh, as uh, the guardians of guardians of your light, at least in this case, uh, come to your aid. Uh, this guy's pissed that you left, felon. He's not that pissed. He's gonna stare at Cloud. And say, "Hey, you should be scared." Should I? Don't don't shit talk him. <sighs> this goes poorly. We're gonna be in real trouble. <laughs> Oh, if only I if only I was playing Thara. Half of us get those advantages on saved against being scared. Um, wisdom, please. Right. Here we go. Oh no! And oh. That's five. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I'm sorry, he's got other targets. Wait, hold on. Fries by five or more. Oh shit. Wait, yeah. no. Yeah. Fuck. Five. Oh. Oh no. Well, it's been real. I guys. see a six though. Yeah, but yeah. that's by five because he sees eleven. He sees eleven. Wow. Yeah, that's five or more. So did any of the clerics keep lesser restoration? I haven't prepared. I do have it prepared. I don't know if that works against this, but I'm really hoping. It does. It does. Okay. Okay. It does. I've had that prepared since I got second level spells, and I've never used it. But I've I've never been happier that I chose to prepare it than this moment right now. And how prepared is Felon? Uh, as uh, as you see, Cloud literally <laughs> freeze in place right next to you. Oh no! Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to move this bad boy. To here, it's my bonus action, so I can smack this guy. Uh, because he put Cloud to sleep. I don't like that. I'm not asleep, I'm just eyes wide, <laughs> stiff as a board. Oh, are you an elf? <laughs> I haven't hit ah, you, big, much. you big jerk face. Uh, and then I uh reach over and I touch Cloud with my lesser restoration. Uh. Uh, yeah, that's a thing that happens. Uh, and and Cloud seems to be frozen for literally a second. Uh, as, as you restore him. Like, and I like blink, blink, and I reach out and I touch you too. Like, like oh, okay. <laughs> like, uh, uh, Felon, Felon throws out his arm like your mom did when you were a little kid and you, you had to stop the car kind of fast. And <laughs> he's like, no, 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 no. And he reaches out and touches him with lesser restoration. Uh, as Mother Felon uh, mm -hmm. protects and, and guides uh, this the mummy in front, uh, go to look at Cloud. No, no. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. Buddy. All right. All right. Yeah, All right. Didn't succeed. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Come we got on. this this time. We got it this time. We got it this I time. Here we, go. Here, we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here yeah. we go. Here we go. Never Suck again. Clutch Never again. again. Suck it, mummy. Just that shit will get you hit. grounded. <laughs> uh, and as you say that, um, this mummy kind of turns and looks and it's like, yeah, yeah, that will get you grounded, felon. No, no, it won't. I smack his his rotted, crumbly, wrapped fist out of the way with my shield. Yeah, he's not happy about that either. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still high on uh, felon's magic at this point. I'm like, nope, won't work. All right, Athy, give me some nice full damage. Uh. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, yeah. I mean, two sevens with the net two. Sixteen radiance. Yeah, that's a chunk of radiance. 
uh, and and he's not having any of that. He looks down, and he looks up, and he looks down. Yeah, it kind of, well, uh, kind of off the side of his head. Must, must kill. Um, and then shoots at you Ooh. twice. Oh, what is with uh, these rolls? Come on, Khan. Come on, Khan. Khan. Did you, uh, you did, did you use your temporary hit points first from just, earlier? Just okay, just, just checking. <laughs> it's a nice little plank. Kind of as as he shoots the first arrow, he kind of glances back up to the north, and then looks back down to the south. Um, has spirit guardians gone away in between these two glances? Uh, Wait, wrong, wrong thing. It's like the wrong one. Hold on. Again, the wrong. Why am I? I'm an... <laughs> Constitution save. There we go. There he... <laughs> hey. Uh, and then still seeing those. He, As he, I he hit all again. the wrong buttons. Uh, but this time it looks like he, he's uh, a little bit more afraid of your resoluteness. Uh, and then he moves, he steps far away from uh, the circle of icky, icky light that's next to him. Uh, seven, you, 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 you've you uh, escaped the glare of two mummies in one day. Yes, yes. Um, well, uh, so the one that's in the back is the one he's been bopping with the the flaming sphere or spiritual weapon. Yes, the the cart is. Uh, it has been uh, making its attacks. All right. Um, Hoofa doofa. All right. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? <sighs> yeah, I think we may need to just unload on this one that's up uh, up on us here and try to get him down as quickly as possible. Um. I'm going to go into a, a my usual sequence two two handed uh, quarterstaff attacks. So the first one, I assume that's a hit. Uh, Twenty is good to go for five. Nice. Uh, yeah, and as you uh, as you hit him with your staff, uh, it seems to be significantly less effective. Uh, Fun. It strikes. Um, I've kind of gotten the feel of this now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Things are going yeah. all the way through. Well, um, if that's the case, can I change my second attack to an unarmed? Well, you haven't done it yet, so absolutely. Yeah, okay. So yeah, feeling that, that that doesn't quite connect enough, I kind of pull my staff back into a defensive position and then just follow up with uh, with claws and kicks. So the first one. Nice. Natural 20. Yeah, that's a thing. Nice. For ten points of damage, and that does count as magical. If you need to know, kill um, again. Do it again. And then I'm going to spend again. a keep. Well, then I'm going to spend a key point and kick in flurry of blows. Kill him. Um. So I get two more attacks as a bonus action, and I need to reduce my open hand stuff because those are free. First one. Thirteen, probably not. Thirteen. Uh, this mummy is very slow and sluggish. Oh, and uh, it's wearing bandages. So, all right. Well, good to know. For five points of magical and um, ooh, um, well, no, I've. Let's see. If I knock him, push him away fifteen feet, that's that wouldn't be any direction. It would just be kind of where he's at because he we would knock him back into the flaming sphere. Or the spiritual weapon, that wouldn't matter anyway. Um, I'm going to make it so we can't take reactions until the end of the next turn. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, that, I know, I know, because that's... 
I first I was gonna do the knocking him down. Like, no, 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 this will be good because then we can disengage if we need to. Um, and then I'm gonna use my next attack and for my last one on flurry of blows. Twelve. Does a twelve hit? So twelve will do them. Okay. Good. I was gonna say for thirteen, did a twelve might also for seven points of magical. He's still and standing. Then, he's still standing. Um, and then um, he's going to have to make a deck saver be knocked prone. DC on that is 13. Blub, 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 blub. <sighs> um, all right. Knowing that that's what's going on now, um, I kind of look at Felon and kind of, <laughs> kind of give him the, the the universal look for let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> let's go. And I'm going to twenty five. I'll fall back to here so I can at least take some try to get some of the aggro off Briseis. He falls back faster than I can travel in like three rounds. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that was it was only fifty-five from there to there. It's yeah. only fifty-five. <laughs> Just. It's only fifty-five. And I took a round without so I can use my speed boost next round if I need to. <laughs> um so so as uh seven lays the groundwork for Felon to actually be able to get out of dodge. Uh, and Clay, Cloud actually runs right next to a different white. Uh, but this oh, one, okay, yeah, that's fine. Doesn't look that wise. Get him, Briseis. Why does it say a strength? I don't know. Roll twenty, you're drunk. Yeah, roll 20, you're drunk. Stop making my whites make wisdom saves. Um, and this one realizes where all of the problems are coming from. And even though you are dressed in some solid armor, he really, oh, really... Oh. Yeah, she goes down. So that's eight. Eight? Yeah. Well... Away. All right, so so as you go down, Briseis, uh, you uh, collapse to the ground, and the device on your back um, kind of tilts and starts slowly dripping water out of the chest. And it's almost as if, uh, it's such a slow trickle, it's almost as if the water has a mind of its own as you see it start to crawl towards the body of water nearby. And you uh, guys see a familiar familiar uh, face appear and pop out of the water and its eyes get really big and glossy as it sees Briseis down on the ground. And it balls up its, uh, its, its hands into big water fists and just looks really angry. Yeah, and this white is like, uh, uh, um, and it tries to slash a cloud and I'm assuming that is no good. Yeah, yeah. Probably startled by the existence of a <laughs> giant body of water appearing right next to it. And uh, Coral has entered at it, the worst possible initiative to start at. But who oh boy, is he pissed. A new challenger appears. 
Uh, there is a flaming sphere somewhere right up in there, wherever it fits. Did the white move away from it? Visual cues. Sorry. That's okay. That's me. Um, considering, here, we'll give you a stegosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> flaming um, stegosaurus. Flaming stegosaurus it is. Um, considering what he's standing next to, that white is going absolutely nowhere. He's just going to try to juke him. <laughs> He juked well. Only three. Get him, Steggy. All right, so as uh, Coral appears and <laughs> apparently has to act very quickly, uh, you see the fist ball up and go straight for the white right in front of him. Ooh. With a one, two. Coral, move away from the flame. It uh, it turns to look at you, and and you, Dwale, are, are just kind of you've never seen this look in Coral's eyes before. It's just uh, you know, rage, but understanding at a certain point, and it kind of dips back down, and does a, a one of its famous backflips, back away a little bit. Uh, so Dwale, uh... I handling that uh, violent water elemental. <sighs> Uh, well, it's to be expected. Uh, this Degasaurus will move uh, to the south one and then bump uh, the white to the northwest. Get him, Steggy. It was moving down one, did you say? Uh, south one. And then bump northwest. Yep. We'll take seven. And between uh between coral and a stegosaurus. Yeah, that would that'll be a good one. Between a water elemental and a stegosaurus. There you go. Hey, sometimes these things happen to people. If only I named episodes. <laughs> uh and then uh, we will follow up with a firebolt to the southern white. All right, that'll do. Six on that one. Looks like it's a good, clean hit. It's just, you know, not a very impactful one. Ugh, wet enemies. That's why it looks like it tries to make a decision. It thinks about it a little bit. Really does not like Stegosaurus Flame. Really? Get a gas yes. right there. This one's pretty good. He knows what makes Flaming Stegosaurus I. Yeah, it's good. See, on one side, he's got me and the flaming ball and the water elemental, and on the other side, you. Some solid logic. That is the second number with that D10. Bounces off. A shield bouncing. Dude, 21 AC? 21. Mage armor and shield. Perseus needs plate mail. <laughs> she whispers from the ground. <laughs> Should have gone for the cat or the one on the ground. Uh, speaking of Briseis, uh, you are still there. You are still teetering uh, on the brink. 
but you feel slightly more relaxed as much as you can be uh, while you're, you know, actively dying, bleeding out, you know. <sighs> yes. Go, go away. Where go else is it physically going to move? Go away. <laughs> It kind of just smacks you with its fist as you're constantly trying to tell it to go away. Go away! I don't like you. And then, and then looks at Coral, like kind of not being able to understand uh, what in tarnation that thing is in the water. It just stares at it. Coral's oh, yeah. mad, though. Get fucked, mummy. Stupid jerks. Uh, so, so as that jerk tries to scare off, scare off the help and uh, punch you in the face, mm-hmm. Felon, what knowledge are you imparting? Okay. I'm torn. I try to hurt it, or do I make it scared and go away? Um, I think... Alternately, disengage and get the hell back here. No, okay. I can't. They're just going to run over there. It's not any better. Wait. Um, I'm going to do that for sure. Um, okay, that guy's also within 30 feet. This will help. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I am going to channel divinity to turn undead. So... And every undead within 30 feet of me, which I believe is just these three. Yeah, they're too far away. Uh, it needs to make a wisdom saving throw or be f- afraid. It is turned for one minute or until it takes any damage. Turn creature must spend its turn trying to move away as far, as far away from you as it can. It can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you. Can't take reactions. And for its action, it can only use the dash action to try and escape from an effect. All right, so top mummy, all good. Side mummy. Bottom white. Super afraid. So yeah, so they're going to, they just spend their turns running as far away from me for a minute. If they can't go any further, they just take the dodge action. That guy can't, can't take reactions. So, so it's, I'm going it's just, to... It's just any undead. Man, I remember back in the day, like there was a chart. Uh, and like... Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if I, I don't suppose any of them are, but if any of them are CR one half or lower, they die instantly. Right, I don't think that's the case. So then I'm going to come down to here, and I'm going to cast. Um, where is it? Where is my, my? I'm going to cast healing word. Oh, there it is. On verse six. I just have an image of felon seven, like going like uh, uh um, and then that's the healing word. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, So you get seven health back. That guy has to stand up before he can get to me, so I don't think he's, he can even do it. Shouldn't be able to. Shouldn't be able to. Assume so he, he's, uh, he's 30. He, he, he uh, spends his time sluggishly getting up to his feet, and then he moves that nice 10 feet closer. <laughs> yeah, screwed mummy. And he can do nothing. Good. But try to make Bryce Ace afraid. Uh, it's dumb. This is like, I, I can't. I, we clicked the, the right thing this time. Hey. Not scared of no mummies. Indeed, you aren't. This white is definitely afraid. Uh, now, the verbiage on Turn Undead is it runs directly away from you? Uh, just, just says turn, it, uh, must spend its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can. That's all it says. Hmm. 
I guess it's up to you. It might maybe they'll prioritize more obvious routes over routes that are technically they can get further. I don't know. Yeah, basically, it would be. I would, my assumption would be like the most direct way to get away from the source of their fear. Yeah, like they're not really thinking; they're panicking. Uh, so, Cloud, you see uh, a white, and mm -hmm. you see it disappear to the northeast. Fair enough. Uh, and, and then uh, the attention is brought back to you. Uh, well, now seeing that uh, Briseis is, is conscious again, um, can I... I would probably take an action to do that. I was gonna say, I don't think I don't think helping her to her feet would count as an object interaction, would it? No, that would be a little bit more significant. Fair enough. Um, but then again, she's also right here. The other one's down, so there's no immediate threats. Um, so like, I'll kind of look down and give her kind of a nod and leap over her and sprint to there, 35. Actually 40 to there, my bad. Um, to there, to the one that's on um, Dwale. And I'm going to let loose with uh, two unarmed attacks. Eighteen. Uh huh. For eight damage. Second one. Ten probably doesn't hit. Nope. Goes right um, off that great armor that they're wearing. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. Uh. Yeah. No. Yes, no. No, I'm not going to pop a key point. Um, and then just with my bonus action, one final unarmed. <laughs> no. No, unfortunately um, not. So that was 40 to there, 45, 50. Just around to this side to kind of give Dwell some backup. And that's that's mine. Dead white is dead. All right. So, um, <laughs> seeing what's going down and seeing Briseis still not getting up, very very much so worries Coral. Um, she's gonna look towards her and and kind of. There, see a, a little bit of a communication, but uh, ignoring parts of it, she's gonna come and completely apparently trample over her space, <laughs> but just kind of, um, you know, assume a position protectively over Briseis and just kind of look back towards the uh, mummies and then down towards the white and back and forth and back and forth as uh, she kind of forms something that's like a like a water tunnel over Briseis's you know, area. Uh, Doyle, with a uh, with a water tunnel, looks like you could shoot right through that water tunnel. There's a little airspace there. Nothing bad's going to happen. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> why do they always want to get close to me? A little bit behind the white. We'll let loose a shatter. Boosting it uh, with a little alchemical mixing to do a little extra damage. Where is this getting flung? 
Uh, this is getting flung a little bit behind the white, so there. Boonk! So that it does not kill Cloud Nine. Oh. That's always a nice bonus. That's convenient. That's that's where that's where we kind of want it not to hurt me. Uh, and then we'll tack onto that the 2d10 force damage. Uh, something. And that'll cost me a first and a second level spell. And then the sphere of flame is going to move north to hopefully cut off uh, or get close to some of those mummies eventually. Mice. Uh, does the force damage get affected by the save? It doesn't say it does. I'll let that one go to you as far as a what your call is. Uh, it says half damage right there. Uh, half damage on the shatter. The alchemical mixing just does an extra 2d10. It doesn't uh, say that there's a saving throw for it. Hmm. Interesting. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, this white also thinks that that's very interesting, uh, considering that you've pretty much blown him half clean off. Uh, he's taken the sword to you. I don't want him to do that. Uh, and uh, that's, a lot, that's still the first level spells. Armor. All right. Oh, he's not doing that anymore. Sorry, one left first level spells. Bryce Sayus. Uh you see you see Dwell. Uh it looks like he's backing up. Uh you're putting on some defense. He is going to stand up. Here. There. Coral adjusts to, to allow <laughs> it without you getting drenched. Doesn't mind getting drenched, it's the breathing that she needs. And she is not doing so hot, so she is going to cast Cure Wounds with the... No, that takes too long. Cure Wounds on herself. And I cannot do spiritual weapon because right. Correct, because that was an action spell, and you don't have any bonus action cantrips. Unless you're lately. Unless you're oh, lately. Yeah, it's the only one I can think of. Kind of teetering a bit. She'll stand up, grab her sword, get ready <laughs> for next round of stuff. There are still zombos up on top. So, yeah, I mean, yes, that's what she's doing. I mean, somebody did just knock you out. <laughs> like, that's a thing. Um, so this guy is going to book it. Yeah, get out of here, you big jerk. <laughs> Alright, Felon. You just call the guy a big jerk. Yeah. And now I'm in front of you. And now I'm gonna kill his friend. Um first things first. Guiding bolt to this guy. Fifteen? Uh yeah, that'll do. Alright. Thirteen radiant damage to him? And then that'll give me advantage on this next attack, which is me bringing the spiritual weapon down and smacking him in the face with it. That's also a thing. 13. Okay, so advantage didn't help. But that is still an additional 8 damage. Ah, uh, it's staggering. It looks uh -huh. like the wrapping's starting to fall off on the legs. 
Uh-huh. Trying to fall off a little bit on the face too, and uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely leaning in closer towards you. Mm-hmm. Bring it. And, and then it kind of stops there. <laughs> It tries to reconsider its life decisions, but can't. Well, <laughs> I think it's mostly its unlife decisions that are causing it problems. Yeah, that too. So you're just going to close in with you. You're like, I'm going to get you next turn. Uh, you hear some more clitter clatter uh, down that hallway. Uh, Cloud, that brings us to you. All right. Um, I'm going to go back on uh, in on this one, I suppose. Uh, 22. Yeah. yeah, that'll do. For nine. Uh, you feel like you could have just poked him. Oh, okay. And I'll... Uh, <laughs> I'll turn to Dwell and say, you're welcome. And we'll continue from there. Back up to here, I guess. Oh, actually, wait, the thing is still up. Uh, this flaming sphere should be uh, 20 feet north of where it is now. No, I'm saying, but the other, the, the other mummy is still up. Yes, other mummy is still up. 40, 50, 5. Um... I guess I'll come up to here alongside Coral and buy Bryce Dayas a bit of time to make sure she's back up on her feet and functional again. Um, yeah, we did one attack. Nothing else to do, really. Uh, Rob, as you uh, close the gap, mm -hmm. looks like Coral's getting ready to move. Okay. All right. So, see, seeing Bryce has come back up, uh, but not all the threats be extinguished yet. Coral is going to look down, see that the white is taken care of, and then look back up and see that the mummy is actually coming closer and just freak the fuck out as much as water can and go move up and engulf the mummy. And the so as Coral gets into the spot, she consumes the mummy entirely inside of her, grows to fill the space. The mummy is now just a waterlogged, soggy looking mess. And the water starts whirling around. And uh, Coral just, the water just keeps spinning faster and faster inside of her until it looks like she's about to burst. And instead she kind of just like poops out a mummy. <laughs> and it's like all soggy and wet on the ground. Good job. All right. Uh, Doyle, that's a pooped out mummy. This is why... We do not keep elementals in the house. And then Stegosaurus will move 20 feet north. And well, we'll hold action if any thing undead comes within the light range. Hit it with a firebolt. All right. Uh, right at this second, uh, I just realized uh, that the only thing on your screen uh, is the uh, afraid mummy, and he has seven rounds of being afraid. 
Uh, so I'd like to loosen up the turn order a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you guys can do what you need to that is reasonable within turn actions. Uh, we really need to kill that mummy because otherwise she's going to come back to bite us in a pretty substantial way later on. So, yeah, so... Yeah, line up, hold actions, release at the same time. I would, I would agree. Uh, walk the Stegosaurus down. And uh, then line up with a firebolt and on the count of key. <laughs> so you you want to you want to make a firing squad? Basically. That's yeah, basically. I'm sorry. Do you have a better plan for an execution? No, no, I like it. It's good. Let's do it. I also need to remember that I have vicious mockery as a reaction. Oh, it's a reaction. She's a tiefling. Oh, that's true. Oh, did you? Is that the variant? Yeah. Gotcha. Anyway, moot point. So we're just gonna. So you guys are just gonna firing squad this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By all means. And uh... please take one full round of character actions. <laughs> please make sure that it actually kills the mummy. <laughs> uh, uh, Could. Uh... Guiding bolt it and then spiritual weapon it. That's my plan. So, bloop. Oh, I shouldn't have advantage, but it's 24 still. And then, boop. Are we all just. <laughs> Oops. Oh, you have advantage bolt. with the, yeah, the advantage with the spiritual weapon, though. Oh, yes. Thank you. Aha, I knew that. That's why you did it in that order. Yeah, that is why. <laughs> hey, uh, there we go. Uh, so fourteen radiant and six force, twenty damage total. So we all just shoot our things. Yes, or please just... just pew pew. I'm telling the crap out of this dumb mummy. Twelve right. points of magical. Who hides in a coffin. What a loser. God dang it. Uh. Dwell's good for about 20. Good lord. So as Dwell burns it, you realize that it's wrapped in bandages. Mm -hmm. But he's uh, pretty dry. And, and, and like all of your stuff is coming in at the same time, and it just kind of lights on fire and then explodes. <laughs> and then it... uh. You know, like you're talking like here, I mean, your explosion level of what you guys put out kind of, you know, blows up parts all over. It's a nice fiery part, kind of hits these mushrooms, kind of right next to where Felon teleported. And it starts to smell a little stinky. Uh, and that'll end our turn order. Press the digitation to put out the mushrooms if they're still smoldering. We don't need everyone down here tripping. Uh, Briseis is going to turn to Coral, uh, sheath her sword, and just reach up and try to put her hand on the arm shape of the water. I don't know if she could actually physically touch her. But before you even turned around, Coral was like already like right by your ear. <laughs> like, huh? You okay? I would, like touch her arm and touch her face and pretty much be the same same thing like you okay did you get hurt splish on her chest or... she just shoots more water out of her hand at the already drenched mummy on the floor and then puffs up a little are you going to be alright if we press on I'll be fine mm. Um, hopefully we don't run into another ambush like that. Be careful of water feet. And then, then looks at Coral and thinks better if it doesn't finish the sentence. I uh, see it's not easy. So uh, the uh, our, our more dry and angry friends came from up north here, which is where I teleported to. Well, uh... What did you see up there? And is there anything worth taking before we move along? Well, there might be some, there were two coffins that they were in. There might be something in the coffins. 
Well, let's do and it. mushrooms. Wait, was that not where the execution squad happened? Well, it was around there. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, let's take a uh, quick look at the uh, coffins. Perseus will um, pick up the um, chest and see if Carl wants or needs to go back in. Ah, coffins are boring. Yeah, um, Coral jumps right back in and just kind of peeps out. Um, and then investigating the coffins, you do find uh, two coins uh, from that are similar to the ones that you found on the road at the Merchant League carts that were uh, ransacked and bamboozled and whatnot. Guild tokens? Maybe. Maybe this is how they get rid of people they don't like. Potentially. Hmm. So there's a. Are there actual uh, placards on the coffins? Like, possibly with names. There are uh, gold plaques on top, but nothing is carved into them. It looks like somebody took care enough to put people in there, but not to scribble it, who they might have been. Well, if we wish to think the best of uh, Beatrix and her brother, it's possible these would be them and we're dealing with imposters. Or... Uh, I think that is unlikely. Well, you always think the worst of people, Felon. Haven't been wrong yet. Well, shall we go and see if Trix is worth saving? I suppose. Uh, and Stegosaurus would expire after a minute or two. As would my cart. As would the rampant fear that uh, that one white had when he ran off. Yeah, fucking bring it, dude. I am... I'm not in the mood for your soggy butt right now, okay? <laughs> I was going to say, let's see how well you do against the whole group of us. I haven't used a single level 3 spell slot. Let's do it, dude. Somebody, uh... Somebody let me know who's uh, going up first in here. I can take point again. He said ominously. Cloud, you know I have toys for this. You're going to send your weird horse monster? No, I was thinking, and he reaches into his pouch and looks at one of the little furry things and just lobs it down the uh, walkway. What is that? Oh, I don't no. know yet. That's the interesting thing about these. What do you mean you don't know? Well, that's when knowledge is not mine at the moment but what what is it where'd you get it what is it don't remember the badger uh that would be a giant elk <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's oh i it's that thing <laughs> a giant elk ah oh, damn it I don't have a token for an elk. Are you kidding me? Yeah, well, right. it's, well, it's going to be a Stegosaurus. <laughs> That's right. You give me a thing that produces random stuff, you're going to get random stuff. Um, so, uh, so as you throw uh, a giant elk down uh, in front of Cloud, uh, it, it will appear uh, shortly. Um... You start to hear, uh, like, squish, 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 um, start to come back. Um, it sounds like... Perseus, you've seen this before. You know, like, in your early, early training days, when you'd have to go train out in the rain, or, you know, worship in the, in, in the wet, and then you would come back inside. You kind of have that same feeling on your feet. 
uh, as you hear this sound. Um, so as the, as uh, as some waterlog boots approach, um, it doesn't remind you at all of how uh, coral sounds. Completely different. It sounds mm. solid and wet. Yeah. Have any of you ever seen an elk charge something? I haven't, and I am looking forward to it. Well, let's hope it's good at it. Well, they're expendable. Unlike Cloud, who's important. I don't even don't even know how to don't even know how to react to that. <laughs> a the fact that he felt the need to say it, and B the the fact that there was that long of a pause, and it was like, oh wait, I should probably say this. Um, Look, you made an elk. I made an elk. Excuse, as a proud Mainer, that is a moose, sir, not an elk. Well, it's an elk now. I'm sorry. The image that I got, I had to actually crop out the word elk, so I'm pretty sure it's an elk. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a hundred. That could not be more a moose. It's, it's a little. Look at its straight yeah. teeth. It it's totally an elk. <laughs> That's the funny characteristic tooth. is is their dentistry. It's straight tooth. That is a single tooth. I don't see any any lines <laughs> on that tooth. Uh, yeah. So are we? So the elk is getting sent down the hallway. Uh, yes, the elk is getting summoned, yes, and then he's getting be... light cast on him, and <laughs> he says, "Go get him." The old classic of the elk in the coal mine. <laughs> Charge forward. Okay. Whatever so it is you, you things some, do. You put some light on him. Yep. Which is what forty. Would you give him forty? All right. So ca casting light on him. To light my staff. I'm going to be a, a bit blind in a moment. So casting light on him, uh, his antlers light up and start glowing as he, you know, shakes his head and fur riffles back and he starts clomping forward down, obeying your every command. Clomp, clomp. Uh, and then he gets to about here. Uh, and you hear the squish. Mm -hmm. And then can somebody roll me a d4? All right, uh, and then uh, ah. somebody want to roll me a d20 for this thing's save? Well, you tried, Casey. Uh, you tried, but as you see the moose starting to charge, what you assume is the squashy boot sound. Uh, you see a very dark ray um, shoot into uh, your elk, and it kind oh, of no. implodes into darkness. Oh, uh, and it leaves kind of like a nice elk stain on the wall. Oh, and I think that's where we'll pick it up next week. Wait, wait, can I can do one thing? Oh, no. Please, can I do one thing? <laughs> Dwayne wants to look back to Cloud. And in the same tone of voice, go, you're welcome, as he did with me. <laughs> <sighs> oh, no. Hey, hey, Mr. Mr. Uh, or Mrs. Uh, or Miss, no. whatever. I don't know. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wasn't going to ask. Uh, but, but now that you brought it up. Now that you brought it up, did we happen to level? Just as a, as a, side, a little sidebar before I ask my real question. Did we? Did we happen to level Sin specifically? Sin, hey Sin, did we happen to level? <laughs> Despite you touching and licking and you know cleaning, I, I all licked the a things. lot of things. And I really appreciate you jumping on the teleport, but no. I bet you do. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Okay, my, now my real question that I was actually going to ask first. Um, does that ray of darkness look familiar? Um, well, I'm not quite sure if you've read about these things, but go ahead and roll Arcana. Not, um, not exactly what I meant. I don't, I'm not trying to identify the spell. I mean, does it look similar to the powers that the evil lady in the dream used? That's the question I'm getting at. Basically. Okay. <clears throat> um... Hmm. Go ahead and roll an arcana. Okay. 20. Yeah, so with, with a 20, you, um, you're um you pretty confident that uh, it's powerful, but nothing like what you saw before. Okay. Good to know. Right. But still uh, something to be wary of, for well, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm wary. Well, I'm glad I sourced that image quickly <laughs> to have it just completely <laughs> obliterated. Mm -hmm. I like that the antlers extend beyond the token border. So, uh, because this one is ending here, I, I think we're looking at two more or one really long session so i don't know which guy you guys would prefer i mean if we start at our usual time i feel like we probably need to do two unless we're starting like way earlier for some reason hmm. um i know i don't have to do anything next wednesday so i could uh I don't know if I can we start can just earlier. Play it by ear and see how it goes too. I mean it it might might be just one regular session and then some of another. So maybe we could do have a backup if it doesn't last too this. full. Sure. That's a month ago. Talk about the transition, you know, that stuff. All the reminders. I I, I, I would just like to note, first of all, I I, I would have dodged it. Second <laughs> second second of all, I could have survived that hit. Just saying. Uh-huh. Finally get some extra hit points, and now he's bragging about it. So he didn't <laughs> it. Hey, you know, I would have had a grand total of eleven hit points left. That's okay. I've got I've got two more fuzzy lumps in my pouch. I can... You're just gonna throw them down there one at a time until, until they drain all their spell slots. That's hey. How long do they last? What happened to the badger? Uh, they uh, so they uh, they disappear at dawn, um, or if reduced to zero hit points. Uh, and then I can reuse them the next day. I think it's safe to say it probably reduces zero hit points there. I'm gonna guess that the mighty elk, uh, giant elk. <laughs> has, spoilers, uh, spoilers, it actually had 40 hit points, it just barely took it out. Actually, I'm not sure what a giant elk has. I don't know. It's a giant elk, yeah, it's a giant elk. Well, let us see. The normal elk only has like 15, so a normal the old, elk's toast. The old giant elk. Oh, oh. Are you kidding well, me? 42, according to the monster manual. Oh, oh he lives. Oh. <laughs> well, provided they went for the average and didn't decide to roll his hit points and he was lower. Yeah. Hey, like he lives to, to fight another, another fight. That giant elk is oh. like. Reha laughs at whoever that was. It's just <laughs> ah, thought you could fell me, did you? Look at that poor health bar. <laughs> Feebly Cause... looks back at Twail like, why? <laughs> why, father, do you do this to me? Uh, don't worry, I'll put you out of your misery. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> I told you to charge, not walk slowly. What's with you? Oh, wow. The elk made it into another episode. Yay! <laughs> Yay! 
new fan favorite character, the giant elk. Yeah. Elk giant. is angling for our current character spot. Yeah. You had to come like, up with a name for the giant elk. I hadn't thought about him yet. Pretty soon we're going to get letters about him. <laughs> He's going to be like uh, Chief call Engineer him. Argyle in the next generation. Call him like Dusty. Dusty? I don't know. I was kind of thinking about going with like one of the really bad names, like Elton John or something. <sighs> I might kill him myself then. If that was I was seriously not expecting. I don't know why I was not expecting Felon to not, but to to not like do all the things. <laughs> of course, Felon's gonna do all the things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, generally, uh, not. yeah. If you're gonna plan for 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 prep, if there's something that can be done, assume Felon is probably gonna rush headlong into it. <laughs> to be fair, I thought fun? there were vampires in there, so I was very surprised when Bubbies came out. Because <laughs> that would have been better. It would have been worse, but you know, no, that's not a play to the character. I was sarcastic. Ooh, hey, he was already renamed. Look at that. They're on it. Ugh. Yeah, that's sort of, that my him. Yeah, just ragged not... scraps of flesh hanging from his bones after that hit. Like, it's almost it's like just... a candle in the wind or something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh. Have to write a candle in the wind parody for next week. <laughs> Hold on, let me. <laughs> I have to look up the chords for that, and we can. Well, I'll do something. Oh, that's right. You can actually make music things happen. Eh, not, not so great, but. Oh, it's a heck of a lot better than me. So. Yes, yes. That's what we really want is a ukulele cover of "Candle in the Wind." <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I could see Elkton playing a can uh, ukulele. Oh. Better watch out, Kobold's my star. He has hooves. <laughs> That's why the ukulele is so perfect for him. I mean, they're cloven, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> sort of a strum sort of thing. I'm really glad I remembered I had that pouch. That would have hurt really bad. <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't have been spectacular. Feel free over this next week to go back through the loot because I think there's some other little gems that you guys haven't used or have forgotten about or whatnot. I know there's that journal in there that hasn't been touched. There's some stuff in there. Wait, which journal? There's a journal? I haven't read it yet? Or are you talking about the loot <laughs> journal? Yes. Or the journal. The journal for loot. Journal uh, for loot. Oh, okay. I'm, I mean, not that any of that's going to ever save you, but, you know, stuff. So, Briseis um, has a healing potion in her thing that I never noticed. When did... Did, did we ever use those? Uh, I when think, did that happen? I think you still have your healing potion. Dwell has gone through all the ones he's ever gotten his hands on because the healers keep falling down. Mm -hmm. Um bad healers. Except when you pick him up, then you're good healers. We should... Oh, we should... Because I never look at my equipment. Hmm? I, said, I, was, I, just, I was just imagining Cloud with the potion of growth. Oh, Just the biggest tangle of limbs. Yeah, they just that like, and your punches like stretch like, yeah, like <laughs> and then they retract. <laughs> yeah, because he's already bordering on like seven feet tall. He's uh, he's like, well, I guess not that much. Six six, but yeah, the the bad smelling ointment uh, is uh important. I think I flamed most of the scrolls. Yeah, okay, it's easy to play. 
<laughs> I had to tra- 